Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Failed the Entrance Exam of Kuo Academy and Went to Nanyo Academy Ikitausen Part 3. Before we start please go support David Armando Lopez Ray for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. This is the translated version I made, there will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this essay is a male in this story. Chapter 6 The Wheel of Destiny. Underworld. Gremory Castle. We found ourselves in the Gremory Castle, more specifically in a large room where Lord Gremory Ziodicus and Venelana Gremory Bale were talking to Juzo Haidu, it can be said that the demon couple was very good friends with the albino, after helping him in some events in the past on their vacation in Varna. Bulgaria where they were trying to kidnap by some members of the Bulgarian Mafia and then ask for a reward from Sersiches, coincidentally Juzo was also in this country that was training and preparing for the WoW tournament in Japan in a few months, the man Haidu saw the couple who was in danger by the mobster. Quickly Juzo without thinking twice swings towards the group of mobster who was very distracted when one of them turned to see a person who was going towards them, quickly try to warn the others, but it was too late. Since Albino Haidu kicked him in the face that left him lying on the ground, and while the others pointed their weapons to start shooting left and right at the intruder, but it was all in vain, Juzo hesitated a lot to deflect the rain of bullets with great skill, and began his counter-attack on the mobsters who fell like flies, followed by the couple, and the man Haidu left the place. Then a patrol arrived to see what had happened. Already inside the hotel where the couple is staying, he attacks Juzo for having saved him from that danger, but the albino tells him that there is a problem, since he is characterized by helping others who need help, since then a friendship had formed between the Gremory family and Juzo in the following years. Juzo, it's a joy to see you, my friend, who visited us in our castle, said the older red-haired man happily. True, it's been so long since we saw him in his dojo he said the beautiful brown-haired woman. It's nice to see you too said Juzo who was sitting on the armchair. How's a say kun? Venelana asked her albino friend. Sai he's fine, since a few months ago Goru made the decision to banish him from his family, and now he is in an apartment that I left him as a high school graduation gift, answered Haidu with a semi-sad expression when he was leaving after hearing the news that his son had made some worse. Stupid decisions to banish his favorite grandson, since he was the only one who was interested in learning the martial arts. Haidu. Since then, Juzo and Goru had a very distant relationship because the brown-haired boy and his wife always focused on Asamu giving them everything, and while Issei was Goru and Asamu's punching bag, the martial arts fighter confronted his son, who left him belittled his youngest son. But Goru was never interested in listening to his father's words, since he was busier with his power in Asami's company, when Wilbert's arrest occurred, the eldest brown-haired boy took the opportunity to buy half the shares of his former best friend's company. For Juzo's eyes about Goru and Asamu are not him, who never needed luxury, but when he entered to be a martial artist with his teacher who had to train and become the man he is currently, however with his son, it was the opposite when he married his deceased wife 15 years ago. Since then he had to raise Goru to the age he has his brown-red grandson taught how to earn a living in an oven way for a long time, however, when he entered the university in the business administration career where it changed completely. Now he cared about having money and fame at the cost of destroying those he has to step on, and it is not strange for Juzo that Isamu has the same mentality as his father, and the only one who is not contaminated, because it was Issei who always took care of him when he left him at the Haidu Dojo, as if he were a pet, and while they went on luxury trips. Both Lord and Lady Gremory were shocked by their friend's response, but the brunette spoke again. I see, I think that decision suited Issei Kun well, said Venelana looking at Juzo. I agree with my wife, the boy wanted to set him free after all the shit he had to suffer in his childhood, or am I wrong, Juzo said Ziodicus, who was drinking a glass of wine. I also had that feeling, since they see Isamu as an exemplary son despite having committed the same practices as his father, while Issei was a hindrance to their lives, since my grandson tried to get the attention of his parents with small achievements, but he will never recognize it above his elder who was more important he said extremely strongly. When he learned that Issei failed Kao's entrance exam because the teacher on duty was in the classroom to take the exam to the student council in hand, Sauna Shatori who was actually Sona Sitri, one of the city's managers, was evaluating the brown-red exam before being delivered to the director. When someone eternal who does not belong to the academy took him to the student council room to prevent his grandson from entering, and it turned out to be Isamu who had entered the room to have a talk with the student council president, where it lasted an hour with Sitri younger, when he finished his conversion. Where Isamu left with a smug smile and followed by Sona who would take the other exam change course towards the director's office. Leaving aside the talk of my grandson's life, you are now doing well in your school life at another school, Juzo said to the couple. Right, let's get straight to the point Benelana said seriously. What information will you bring us, old friend? Asked Lord Gremory. 
The bad one that involves my family and your daughter's fiancé, the albino responded seriously. When the couple heard what Yuzo said they had a bad feeling about what was going to happen in the future. With Ryofu. Inside the traditional wooden room located in the Rikuyo Academy, we see the green-haired girl who was lying on a mat while looking at the ceiling and then making the call. Hello, who is it? Said an old man's voice through the telephone receiver. Master Choku, it's me, Ryofu Ryofu said from his cell phone. Ah, how about Ryofu-chan, this is unexpected of you? What is it that you want from this old man? Asked Master Choku. Well, it's to talk to you about someone, an interesting boy I met a week ago, answered the green-haired girl while sighing. The thing is, he's not a warrior, but he feels different from us and normal people he said to his master. Different how? Master Choku said doubtfully. He has a power I don't know about, something I've never felt before in my life, and the strange thing is that I was attracted to him Ryofu said. MNN, I see you want to teach me how to control that mysterious power, even though he's not a fighter. Said Master Choku as his hands brought it to his chin. At first I was thinking of bringing him with you so you could evaluate him first, said the green-haired girl honestly. But now that I think about it, I don't think he can go to you directly, since you would be too far away for him, since he lives in Kuo that old man had heard everything. So, what is that person's name? Master Choku asked with interest. His name is Issei Haidu, and he attends Nanyo Academy Ryofu answered his teacher. Issei Haidu and Nanyo, said Master Choku. Very well, I will be leaving for Nanyo within the next week, as someone will not be visiting me in Nanyo due to some business in Tokyo, while I am at it, I might as well give you a check on your illness, he said the old man to his student. Thank you master, see you soon said the green-haired girl as she hung up her cell phone, without noticing that outside the room was a short brown-haired girl who had heard him. Somewhere in Kanto. Warriors from different academies are gathered in an open field of a port located on the north side of the city, to watch the fight where blows resonate. The basics he said to a black-haired dark-skinned man named Kakuten as he kicked a fighter in the right cheek with his left foot. On the screen of a smartphone there was a message. The Great Fighters Tournament. The sleeping lion Kayasha was finally awakened. Kayasha's Kakuten is dumb, but he's very strong said to a fighter while reading the message. Among the crowd, there is the dull chocolate-haired man, and next to him is a dark-haired man with a few hairs on his mustache and chin with a purple magatama on his left ear, they were looking at a woman with short black hair, who was just watching the fight in silence. Hey Kakuka, is she an acquaintance of Kakuten? Said the dark-haired boy named Shizanaosu, a sea-level fighter, to his friend. MNN, I'm not sure about the details said Kakuka. But she said some things that I do and apostrophe t know about what her friend said about him. Far away from where the fight is is a dark reed who was sleeping on the roof of a green container while snoring. But this a, Hakufu and the unconscious Kakushu. Outside the parking lot, we see the brown-haired boy leaning Kakushu on a railing, while the orange-haired girl is secretly amazed by her friend's strength. This a, can you call the ambulance? Hakufu said to the brown-haired red-haired boy. Yes, but I need to borrow yours, Issei said as he wiped the blood off the muscle man's face with a handkerchief he had taken out of his pants pocket. Partner, dodge quickly now Drake shouted, alarming his bearer who was surprised by that, but still quickly ducked while dodging a blow from an iron stick with a manga, which is a weapon that the police use to hit criminals, the boy jumped to a safe distance and then saw the cause of the aggression, who was a guy wearing an orange jacket with a deranged expression. The guy in the orange jacket turned his head to look at the orange-haired girl with a manic smile. The Kufu Sansaku, Kenei said in a demented tone. Again? said the orange-haired girl with an annoyed tone when she saw the person who was going to kill her since the incident in the gymnastics locker room at Nanyu Academy. And why are you telling me my full name? I asked the guy in the orange jacket. Sansaku I'm going to kill you ha 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 said the madman, as he immediately went to hit the orange-haired girl with his weapon, but. Iwahakufu dodged and arched backwards almost falling on his back. The Kufu-chan, do you know who that crazy guy is? The brown-haired red-haired boy asked as he stood up. Yes, he is Kande Kauka, one of the four divas answered the orange-haired girl as she recompassed herself. At that, the guy in the orange jacket turned his head to look at the unconscious muscle man. The Kushu said Kande as he approached the muscle man and then stopped and crouched down. Tell me why? She said, but the muscle man didn't say anything because he was apparently still unconscious from the fight he had while ago. Because you took me out of the tournament ha 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 he said while laughing madly as he held the collar of the muscle man's shirt with his left hand and his right hand to prepare to attack with his weapon. Hey, you're supposed to come for me said Hakufu to the man in the orange jacket who turned to look at her to look at the unconscious muscled man again. We have to amuse attention from Gakushu, Hakufu chan Issei said to the orange haired girl. Okay, Hakufu said. I'll take care of it while giving him a sly smile. 
At that, the orange-haired girl did something to make the brown-haired boy have a drop of sweat on his forehead. Slap. 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 Hey, hey, hey come catch me, said the orange-haired girl who was leaning forward while spanking her butt with her right hand, causing her to catch the attention of the guy in the orange jacket. Really? Why can't she be so serious? Said the red dragon with a deadpan expression at the orange-haired girl's action. What can you do drag, she's a little clumsy when she's in a situation like this, said the brown-haired red-haired boy, while shrugging his shoulders. Yeah, yeah come and catch me loser, said Hakufu when she stopped spanking herself, and then ran while the guy in the orange jacket got angry, and let go of the unconscious muscle man's shirt collar, and went after her. Ugh I'll kill you Sonsaku said Kane as he chased the orange-haired girl, and left the muscle man out of danger. The brown red man prepared to run, but not before looking at the unconscious muscled man. Forgive me Gakushu, but I will visit you later at the hospital, said Issei to go after the guy in the orange jacket and try to stop him from killing his friend. With Ryamu. We go to the blue-haired girl who just put the patch on her left eye, while I look to the side to see the Yashu fighters who are unconscious on the ground with bruises, one was the bald one with blood coming out of his nose and the one with a scar from his mouth. Nandyo Academy takes the victory by 2-1, Shimer Ayamu defeated Ganryu and Bunchu said Keetsu while answering the result of the fight on his cell phone. Who's next? Ryamu said to the referee, who heard what he was saying on the other end of the line and ended the call. Wait a second there were some changes said Keetsu. Changes? Said the blue-haired girl who was doubtful about that. Please wait for further notice Keetsu said formally. It's okay, they have never changed the place where the tournament is held Ryamu said, and then turned around to leave the place leaving the referee and the unconscious Yashu fighters. After she left the parking lot, the blue-haired girl was standing in front of the unconscious muscled man. The Kushu, I hope you forgive me for arriving so late, said the blue-haired girl, but looked around and noticed that the brown-haired red-haired girl and the orange-haired girl were not there, while the sound of the approaching ambulance could be heard. Where did they go? I asked no one. At that moment, the sound of a cell phone rang. Ring ring ring. Ryamu took his phone out of his pocket to check the message that just arrived and then frowned as the location of the fight had already been set. In a food court that is on top of a shopping center. Nanyo took the victory nobody expected that said to a guy with dark blue hair who was sitting at a table with his friends who were checking their cell phones for the result of the fight between Nanyo and Yashu. Far from the other tables is a purple-haired girl who was reading the message that just arrived, after reading she looked to the side to see a black cell phone on the table, she remembered the talk she had with her leader. Flashback. Seto Academy. The purple-haired girl was heading towards the Seto Academy after her training in the forest, and when she arrived at the entrance, she saw a brown-haired girl with reading glasses sitting on a bench while calmly reading the book. Ryubi said Kanu as he approached the aforementioned who stopped reading and then looked at her. Ah, hello Kansas and Ryubi said with a smile. You weren't with Shauki? The purple-haired girl asked her leader. Yes, but she left me alone while she went shopping Ryubi answered, and then the purple-haired girl noticed a black cell phone that was on the right side of the brown-haired girl. And that cell phone, Ryubi, Kanu said to the brunette. Ah, this Ryubi said as he took the black cell phone with his right hand. Well, it belongs to a boy who forgot to pick it up from the floor he said, while the purple-haired girl became alarmed. The boy, you say? Said the purple-haired girl, upset. Don't tell me you went out again to get more books. She said, worried about her leader's integrity. W well that MNN said Ryubi looking to the side in an embarrassed manner while playing with her fingers so that the purple-haired girl let out a sigh. Did the tea hurt or something? Kanu asked when he thought that this boy could be just like the other men in this region who take advantage of the situation. No, he didn't do that, I just ran into him because I wasn't paying attention to where I was going when I was carrying the books, and he helped me pick them up, answered the Seto leader, while the purple-haired girl didn't he feel a hint of lying in her voice, so she calmed down. Okay, I believe you said the purple-haired girl highlighted. And what was it like? He asked his leader about him. MNN, he had short brown hair, honey-colored eyes and was a little tall said Ryubi. Brown hair, honey eyes I think I've seen him thought Kanu when she heard the description of that person who she remembered that it was the brown haired man who accompanied the orange haired girl when she crossed paths with him that day, she felt a mysterious aura in him, even though he is not a warrior. And you know that boy's name said the purple haired girl with interest. Yes, his name is Issei Haidu, said the brown haired girl until she had an idea. Hasan, can I ask you something? He said with a smile. What's it about? Kanu said as he raised his eyebrow. You can give it to him when you see it said Ryubi, as he was going to give the black cell phone to the purple-haired girl. But but she was interrupted by her leader. Please, yes. 
said the brunette in a pleading tone to the purple-haired girl who looked into the brunette's innocent green eyes and then let out a sigh of defeat, since her leader had an aura of kindness. Okay, I'll do what Kanu said, and then took the black cell phone. Thank you, Kasan Ryubi said with a smile. End of flashback. So that is say helped Ryubi, MNN I must check if that rumor is true that he defeated the Nanyu fighters and more, that aura he has inside him, thought Kanu as he gets up from his post and then goes to the place of the fight. Somewhere else in the city. Over here said Hakufu who continued running in an alley. Hakufu san Saku I'm going to kill you, said Kane with bloodlust trying to reach his target. Why do you want to kill her? Issei asked as he ran after the guy in the orange jacket while he stopped as he did the brown red one, the guy turned around to speak. It's that Injutsu gave the order he responded with a lunatic smile. Injutsu? Said the brown haired red haired man who found it mysteriously to hear that name again from the person who was not seen at the academy, since he had previously given the order to execute the orange haired girl, since her second day. But that's been withdrawn or cancelled he said to the madman in the orange jacket. The orange haired girl stopped a little far away as she looked at the two. Huh? What are you doing? Hakufu said doubtfully. Imperial decree. At the west entrance of the Akebikuro parking lot, you must kill Hakufu Sansaku Issei said as he read the message that the guy in the orange jacket was showing him with his cell phone. If that Injutsu guy has ordered the order, why did he know the place where they would fight, despite not showing himself said Drake to his bear. I don't know Drake, but that's kind of suspicious, said the brown red man to the red dragon. The orange haired girl didn't know what her friend was, and the crazy man were doing so she approached them. What's wrong, are you tired of running? said Hakufu and from then on the crazy man put away the cell phone. Hakufu Sansaku Wuhahahaja said Kane while laughing madly and then summarizing the chase towards the orange-haired girl. Ah, here it comes, said the orange-haired girl to run again but. Hi he trips over a can with his right foot and falls on his butt to the ground. Ahahaha Kane laughed madly and jumped with the intention of killing the orange-haired girl. The Kufu Chan Issei shouted in concern. The Ashu Academy. Student Council. In the student council room Yashu was completely destroyed after a confrontation with some subjects who were not participating members of the tournament. Arrived a few hours ago in the courtyard where all his fighters were defeated without problem by two subjects, and while remaining entered the student council to get information about leader Yashu, who had been defeated by an uncontrolled Hakufu last night. And now Ryu Ayu found himself trapped in the arm of the person who was looking at him with sharp eyes at the blonde who was scared by the strength of those guys, while his right hand was knocked down by the emotionless dark-haired boy. The leader of the group spoke. Starting again, what do you know about G.I.? said the black-haired man in Chinese clothes. I don't know anything about what you're talking about said the blonde. My lord, it's a waste of time asking that coward said Saji respectfully. You're right about that said the black-haired man without looking at the blonde. W dot w dot who are you? Ryu Ayu asked stutteringly. Oh, forgive my manners of not introducing myself my name is Kao Kao, descendant of Kao Kao he said, now identified as Kao Kao. The blonde opened his eyes completely when he heard the name of the person in front of him, it was one of the generals of the three kingdoms in person, more if it was his offspring, it was a mystery among the fighters who carried the Magatama. Saji told the leader for the blonde to take a step forward. Yes, my lord said the blonde. Finish the job for me he told me, giving the order. George, modify the memories of everything except the leader of that academy and his right hand man he said to the magician who passed by him. As you command, Kao said the black haired man with glasses. Now we're leaving here, since I feel that the Sekiruite is going to have an interesting fight, and I don't want to lose it for anything, said Kao Kao, who released the leader of Yashu, and turned around to leave the student council room. When their leader had retreated along with the dark-haired boy who was following him, leaving Saji, George and Ryu Ayu alone in the room. Well, Ryu Ayu, I listen to you, my lord. I have to finish you off said Saji, who was approaching the blonde. So don't take it personally, it's just revenge that you took two years ago he said in a malicious tone. The blonde tried to get up, but his entire body was completely battered by Kao Kao's blows, and he was now completely defenseless. Saji why would he betray Injutsu and Nanyo? Ryu Ayu asked weakly. You want to know why I did it, and let's say that Injutsu never really existed Saji revealed, leaving Blonde in shock. Nanyo and the other academy leaders never knew of his existence, since after the crushing defeat of two years, Tei was going to be the next leader of Nanyo, and but as he fell into a coma, he could not be a leader, so I designed to create a false leader, so that everyone would believe in his absolute will however he said and paused, so that Ryuayu heard everything. 
the arrival of the supreme conqueror was going to be a problem for me and my plans, I took Kaukin out of the equation to unleash his full power, but I made a mistake, and I did not notice the presence of Issei Haidu, who will be the new guard dog of the supreme conqueror, he said with venom, after mentioning the name of the brown red, while taking him by the neck with his arm. I used everyone as a distraction to eliminate both of them, but again I failed since that boy had a power beyond the Magamatas, it was a power that could subdue everyone, including Sasu, Raiubi, Tataku and of course Hakufu who is a witness to true power he said, while getting close to the blonde's face. His former subordinate who left you disabled, knew that our enemy is not an ordinary human, but is a dragon, and it is a shame that you did not see his fragment, since you are a coward who sends others to do Tataku's work, ha <laughs> ha laughed. Then the blonde with another hand, more with his fingers, hit the important point of the leader Yashu quickly, and then released his neck and applied a slap to the face that sent him crashing against a wall where he fell knocked out. I'm finishing my work said Saji who took out a cigarette to start smoking. The lens magician used one of his spells to repair the entire place and then erased the memories of Ryu Ayu's men, except the blonde and Hanu who you have seen using his power and the sacred gear of his leader, when he finished the spell leaving the entire place in order, the two left there to avoid the attention of other fighters. On the top of a building. The city skyline where the sky turned orange implying that it is getting dark, we see the blue-haired girl who has arrived at the terrace only to see a single girl who is leaning on the railings with her arms crossed as well as her eyes are closed, a very familiar one for the Nanyu fighter. You did come alone said Kanu with his eyes still closed as he noticed the blue-haired girl's presence of her. I was starting to get bored of waiting while I crossed my arms. Kanu Unchaurayamu said to the aforementioned purple-haired girl who opened her blue eyes to see the blue-haired girl. Oh well, my next opponent must be Nanyo, said Kanu as he moved away from the fence to walk and stop in front of the blue-haired girl, whose forehead was dripping with sweat as she saw Sito's girl. I thought I was an apostrophe T going to cross fists with you he said to his opponent who said nothing. On the cell phone screen it said the following. Hand-to-hand -hand battle between Kanu of Sito and Ryamu of Nanyo, the fight has begun. Sito Academy vs Nanyo Academy, are you ready? Told a referee who was a man with short black hair and reading glasses. Do you believe in the destiny of the sacred bead, Shimer Aimu? Kanu asked the blue-haired girl. Destiny is a result, the only reality that exists is the one in front of me, Raimu replied. MNN, we have the same belief, said Kanu, and then got into a fighting stance like the blue-haired girl. 1,800 years ago in the era of the romance of the Three Kingdoms, Kanu Anchao was a powerful warrior who no one could defeat in hand-to-hand -hand combat, her nobility was almost respected as if she were a goddess, unprecedented this heroine lost her life at the hands of a brave warrior, a warrior general named Shimer Aimu. Clarification after Chapter 6. 1. The friendship between the Gremoi clan and Juzo was revealed. 2. Those who saw the Anime or read the manga know that Ryufo has little time left to live. 3. The madman reappeared again to bring trouble to Issei and Hakufu. 4. The hero faction is mobilized together with Saji. 5. Ryamu and Kanu confront each other. Chapter 7 The Red Dragon Emperor vs. The Goddess of Martial Arts. In an alley in Kanto City. Buhahahaja Kane is laughing madly when he is about to hit Hakufu with his iron stick, who is sitting on her butt on the floor because she tripped on a can, the orange-haired girl saw that the guy in the orange jacket intended to kill her, so she closed her eyes. Wham. The sound of the blow was heard throughout the lonely alley, the orange-haired girl still had her eyes closed, but she didn't feel pain in her body, so she opened her eyes little by little, only to see the person in front of her who was none other than the brown-haired red-haired boy. A few seconds before, the boy had quickly moved to protect his friend, while raising his arms up to form and at the same time the iron stick broke in half, so that the piece of the wooden weapon flew through the air and then fell from afar. The Seihakufu said to the brown-red. You tried to hit her in front of me, said Issei as he lowered his arms, but the bangs of his hair covered his eyes. And that is something I won't allow you to do she said, and then raised her head to see her friend's attacker while getting into a fighting stance. On the other hand, the orange-haired girl had never seen her friend Ella before, who had a serious expression, and you could tell how upset he was in her voice Ella. I'm going to kill you, said the madman to the brown-haired boy who interrupted him at the moment of attacking his target, which was the orange-haired girl. At that, the crazy subject turned himself around to attack with spinning kicks with his right foot to the brown-haired man who dodged it with agility, because he has learned it during hand-to-hand -hand combat training with the black-haired man in his mental space. The subject was going to hit the brown-haired red-haired man's neck with his bare left hand because he had released his iron stick from which it was broken. But the boy arched back to dodge the blow while he raised his right foot to hit the crazy subject's chin with the tip of his foot, causing him to fall on his back to the ground, while the brown-haired man gave a pulse with his left foot to do a backflip and then land on his feet and get on guard. 
The crazy subject got up and then lunged at the brown-haired red-haired boy who remained still. He attacked with the only iron stick he had in his right hand towards Issei's face, which he tilted to his right to dodge it. The subject attacked again with his left hand, but the boy tilted his head to the left again to dodge the blow. The subject attacked the brown-haired boy several times, but failed because the boy was concentrating on tilting his head from side to side, dodging the crazy subject's blows. Issei said Hakufu as he continued to watch the brown-haired boy, quickly dodging the crazy fighter's blows. Ahahaha <laughs> Hakane was laughing madly as his tongue hung out as he went to attack the boy with the iron stick he had in his right hand. But, the brown red one caught and held the crazy guy's right arm with his left arm. Hi Issei shouted and then raised his right foot and gave. Wham. The kick to the crazy guy's left cheek caused some saliva and blood to come out of his mouth. It's the same kick I did when I hit Gakuchan Hakufu thought as he remembered that same movement he did since he entered his first day at Nanyo Academy. Uugaya the madman turned to his left due to the boy's blow and stepped back while his left cheek where the brown red boy hit him swelled. At that, the brown red man jumped upwards at the same time as the crazy guy raised his head slightly. Uo Issei shouted and then gave. Wham. The strongest kick of his left foot towards the subject's face hit him exactly on his right cheek, causing him to spit blood and a tooth in his mouth. Ayagu Kane flew towards the wall where the piles of bags that are covered in garbage in the cans are, and then crashed hard while creating a cloud of dust. Go off. The brown red man landed with his guard up as he looked at the cloud where the crazy guy was, and when he dispersed he saw a hole, but noticed that his legs were outside, while the trash had been scattered. That's a coordination technique thought the orange-haired girl when she saw the brown-haired red-haired boy, but stopped thinking when she heard a moan of pain from the boy. Achisei said with a small grimace of pain as he touched his right forearm which had a bruise where the crazy guy hit him with his iron stick. Are you okay, buddy? Drag said in his mind. If I am Drag, thank goodness I didn't break the bone, said the brown red man while opening and closing his right hand. Issei said Hakufu approaching the brown red man. Hakufu chan, are you okay? Issei said because of his friend's condition. Yes, how is your arm? said the orange haired boy when he saw the bruise on his friend's forearm. Well, it just hurts, but it's not fractured said Issei, and at that the orange-haired girl lowered her gaze a little. Issei, I'm sorry, Hakufu said with a sad tone while the brown-red boy looked at him. This happened to you because of me, because I was I was he said with pain, while tears were about to come out of his eyes, because of the guilt that his friend was hurt by the crazy guy. No it's not your fault Hakufu-chan, if that guy had killed you or you got hurt, I wouldn't forgive myself for this said Issei, as he touched the orange-haired girl's shoulders with his hands and looked directly into the girl's aquamarine eyes. Don't cry, you look prettier when you're excited he said, so that the orange-haired girl would calm down, but also have a slight blush on her cheeks while the boy separated from her. Greg, can you detect Ryamu's energy? He said to the red dragon in his mind. Sure, but he said Drag as he concentrated on feeling the blue-haired girl's energy for a few seconds until he found it. She is in a place not far away where at this moment her Kai is running out and more, there is another energy that is with her as she informed her carrier. In other words, she she's fighting with someone said the brown red one while the dragon agreed. Where is it? I asked. Go straight and when you're in the third block, go left, you have to hurry up, partner. It's okay, Drag Issei said, cutting off the communication. Now we have to go to help Ryamu, Hakufu-chan told her friend. Yes, said Hakufu, nodding his head. Let's go said the brown red one. After that, Issei and Hakufu quickly set off towards the place where the fight originated, leaving behind the crazy guy who began to move with great difficulty to get out of the hole. I am going to kill you, Ugg Kane said with difficulty, while blood came out of his nose and mouth, since the brown-haired boy's kick had hurt him much more than the orange-haired girl's hit. But Ryamu vs. Kanu. B.O.W. Ah Ryamu screamed at the purple-haired girl's blow, which caused him to send him crashing against the fence, causing the blue-haired girl to spit blood out of the corner of her mouth and fall to the ground, while Kanu was standing as if nothing had happened, his bangs covering his eyes as the wind blew his long hair. Ah Ryamu screamed at the purple-haired girl's blow, which made him send him crashing into the fence, causing the blue-haired girl to spit blood from the corner of her mouth and fall to the ground, while Kanu, who was standing as if nothing had happened, was F. Ugh MN and the blue-haired girl got up with difficulty while holding on to the bars, while a line of blood came out from the corner of her lips to her chin, so that a few drops of it stained her maid outfit and looked at the purple-haired girl who looked at the blue-haired girl in the same way. The referee, who was a black-haired man with reading glasses, looked at the fighters who continued to look at each other and then typed on his phone. On the referee's phone screen there was a message before it was sent to Rakuyo Academy. Sido vs Nanyo. Ryamu has been unable to land a hit on Kanu, and she has been knocked down repeatedly. Somewhat far from the buildings. 
Pao Cao, Heracles, Jean and Leonardo who was watching the disappointing result between Ryamu versus Kanu, until one of them spoke. What a disappointment, said the descendant of the hero of Greek mythology. Yes, the result is going to be very predictable, said the blonde very excitedly. The black-haired man, leader of the hero faction, said nothing about the fight between the blue-haired woman and the purple-haired woman. So it's Kanu on Chao of Sido, according to what Saji said, she's the goddess of martial arts, she'd be a recruit for our cause, with that level she has, she can fight a high-class demon, thought Kao Kao looking into the distance that can't be detected by anyone. Akrio Academy. Orchid Room. We see a dark brown-haired boy who is still resting on the lap of the black-haired girl with glasses, as he had just heard the news of the fight between Nanyo and Sido. Fight between Kanu and Ryamu? Tataku asked, looking at the orchid disinterestedly and then smelling it. What happened to the girl Hakufu? Said his right hand of him. I have a report here that says Kane attacked Sonsaku Hakufu Kaku said after reading the report on his cell phone to his boss, who is on his lap. Pane? Said Dark Brown harshly. Pane Kauka is one of the four divas of Nanyo, said the black-haired girl with a lens. MNN, I had forgotten that name Tataku said calmly. But he was knocked down by Issei Haidu Kaku said to his boss. Nanyo's new student, right? Asked the dark brown haired boy since he had heard that name from one of his boys about that person who was with the orange haired girl who helped a dark haired Kayasha fighter on the bridge. Yes, that's right, our spies informed us that that boy defeated Saji Kun, leaving him almost dead, and the other fighters from the same academy by a brute and unknown force, answered his deputy Rikuyo. I see, then I will test it if it is true, Tataku said to the black haired girl with glasses, who agreed while continuing to look at the orchid, and then asked her. What are you doing, Ryofu? He asked his right hand and spoke. I think she's in her room, do you want me to call her? Kaku replied. HMPH, no need, said the dark brown haired man. I think it's time he said and then broke the orchid root before the surprised gaze of the black haired girl with glasses, while the dark brown haired boy smiled sharply. With Ryofu. The green haired girl closed the door to her room after the conversation she had with her master about the mysterious power of the brown red and the denial of the order to go fight against the orange haired girl and prevent the purple haired girl from Sido from fighting against the boy. At that, he looked to his left to see a girl with short almost chocolate brown hair who was his friend and loyal companion who was kneeling. Ah, Chinku Ryofu said when he saw her. I swore my loyalty and that I would follow her for the rest of my life, that's why I want to say this, what you're doing is not right, said Chinkyu, while Ryofu just said nothing, and then walked away from her, as the girl followed him to talk. Itaku will finally find out about this, or maybe he already knows, it can't be that you have spared Saji's life, since it was a direct order, and also that you are secretly having a relationship with a boy you met before, he will kill you if Ryofu finds out, what were you thinking, huh? He said while following the green-haired girl who remained silent since what her friend said was true, since she is starting to fall in love with a brown-haired girl with red streaks. Akraimu vs Kanu. Akraimu launched herself to hit Kanu with her right fist, but the purple-haired girl moved to the side to dodge, causing the blue-haired girl to fall, as well as hit the ground. Uwe Haja the blue-haired girl gets up while panting to try to land a blow with fists and kicks on the Sido warrior who only dodged her attacks with grace. And that Kanu hit Ryamu in the chest with the open palm of her right hand, causing her to fly a few meters, while her maid outfit was torn, leaving her belly exposed, as well as her breasts that are covered by a white bra, and then falling back to the ground. The blue-haired girl got up with difficulty due to her tiredness, and looked up only to see that the purple-haired girl was in front of her. You're disappointing me, aren't you Shimer Ryamu? Kanu said with a disappointed tone since he thought that fighting against the blue-haired girl would be good, but he ruled that out. Ryamu stood up with difficulty while holding her chest where the purple-haired girl hit him with her left hand. Upon seeing this, the Sido girl backed away normally to a safe distance and then got into a fighting stance. That's all said Kanu. The way Ryamu shouted and then launched himself towards the purple-haired girl who did the same. The blue-haired girl was going to punch Kanu's face with her right fist. The same attack said the referee upon seeing the fight between the two girls. The purple-haired girl tilted her head to her right to dodge it and then launched an attack with her right hand, but. Anu widened her eyes as she saw Ryamu quickly duck before the purple-haired girl's punch made contact, then the blue-haired girl grabbed the Sido girl's right arm with both hands and then put her in a submission hold and moved back so that she and the purple-haired girl fell to the ground. I see, she was just waiting right now she said to herself. He has her immobilized not even Kanu said the referee with surprise. In the other place. P.O.W. Wham. Pork said one spectator. Well, well, he said to a second spectator. Idam Hard said to third spectator. At the city's port, the people gathered shouted with excitement as they watched the fight. 
In the center we can see Kayasho's dark-skinned man fighting a shirtless guy, while on one side are four fighters who are unconscious because they were defeated by the dark-skinned man. The black-haired man punches the shirtless man in the face with his right fist and then delivers a left hook to the chin with his left fist, causing him to fly backwards and then fall on his back to the ground while blood came out of his nose as he was knocked out. Ayasha wins this duel 5-0, said the referee who made the announcement. Bu said to fourth spectator. Fork said to fifth spectator. The basics Kakuten said with a smile and raised his left fist in the air in victory. He beat five by himself said to a brown-haired guy, surprised that the black-haired man beat his opponents. Now, let's repair the place said the dark-skinned man while well, he had a sandpaper and a putty in his hands to then begin to rebuild the site. My goodness, you are very aware, said the black-haired woman who was standing and looking at the black-haired man who was sanding the well which once had a hole but was filled by the manila. No, I'm not aware, this is just the basics, Kakuten said with a smile as he continued doing his job. He's very strong said to a brown-haired warrior who was looking at the black-haired man. But very stupid said to a warrior with a black cap so that his friend would not in agreement with the opinion. I've never seen anyone like that, Kayasho's power is limited, said the brown-haired warrior, will the black-haired man wipe the sweat from his forehead. Away from the others in a green container are three men who are from the Kayasho Academy, a dull chocolate-haired one, a dark-haired one, and a dark red-haired one who was still sleeping. Oh, my butt already hurts from sitting, Kakuka said as he rubbed his butt from sitting in the dumpster so much. Aosu, what are the results of the other duels? I asked the dark-haired boy. Anu vs Ryamu are fighting right now Aosu answered while looking at his cell phone. Anu vs Ryamu? That should be interesting said Kakuka, and at that the leader of Kayasho opened his eyes. I don't like it, Sasu said, causing both boys to look at him. Are you awake? He said, barkless, to his leader. What don't you like? Asked Aosu while the dark redeed remained silent for a few seconds before speaking. I don't know some feeling said the dark redeed as he closed his eyes. Returning to the center, the people have left and there were only two people left, one was the black-haired man kneeling on the ground while sanding the putty that was filled in which was a hole before, and the other was the black-haired woman who was still standing while looking at him. And when will you have your fight with Nanyo? Said the black-haired woman. With Nanyo? I don't know, if they win maybe they'll be next Kakuten said thoughtfully. I understand do you know what you're going to do? Said the black-haired woman to the black-haired man who remembered the conversation he had with her the night before. Act Ryamu vs Kanu. The rooftop door opened to see a brown-haired boy with golden and red locks and the orange-haired girl who arrived just in time to see the blue-haired girl who was still immobilizing the purple-haired girl's right arm. Uchan said Hakufu upon seeing the blue-haired girl, will the brown-haired boy notice that she was tired. If you don't give up now, I'll have to break it, Ryamu said as he tightened his grip on the purple-haired girl's arm. It's just an arm, Kanu said as he struggled to his feet. Her arm is said the orange-haired woman in surprise upon seeing the scene. I can't give up my honor for an arm, said the purple-haired girl, and when Ryamu was about to break her arm. Time out said Issei who intervened in the fight between the blue-haired girl and the purple-haired girl who both looked at the brown-haired girl. Issei Ryamu said to the boy. Anu looked at the brown-red boy who was looking at her closely, just as she was looking at him. Are you okay, Ryamu? He asked without taking his eyes off the purple-haired girl. Yes, I'm just sore the blue-haired girl answered tiredly to the brown-haired red-haired boy. Take a break Ryamu said to say. Let me fight her, okay? He told his teammate about him. But Ryamu said, but the brown-haired red-haired boy got ahead of him. Please, Mu Chan said to say as he turned to look at the blue-haired girl who was blushing at being called by that nickname. Okay, on one condition Ryamu said, still blushing. And what would it be? Said the brown red one with curiosity. Tamara you're inviting me to lunch said the blue haired girl. Unsaid is say to Ryamu who only smiled tiredly when the brown haired girl accepted her proposal and then let go of the purple haired girl's arm who stood up and the brown haired girl extended her left hand to the blue haired girl who took the boy's hand with pleasure and then slowly stood up. I give up, Ryamu said to the referee. Ryamu of Nanyo gives up, the victory goes to Kanu of Sido, said the referee. The brown-haired red-haired boy left with the blue-haired girl to where Hakufu was and then took off his white shirt, leaving only his favorite red shirt to then give it to the blue-haired girl. But the Sanase said, while well, the blue-haired girl looked at him. Your suit is damaged, if you walk around the streets like that people would look at you, he said while looking away, although he didn't deny that the blue-haired girl's breasts were nice and firm. Ryamu saw that the brown-haired boy was generous, he received the shirt and put it on while smelling the scent of Issei's shirt, while Kanu inexplicably felt a sudden jealousy towards the girl with the eye patch. Well here I go, Issei said while cracking his knuckles. But you're hurt Hakufu said worriedly. 
don't worry Hakufu-chan, I'll be fine, said the brown red boy as he walked towards the center of the fight. Issei Raimu said to the brown haired red haired boy who stopped for a second and turned to look at her. Be careful he said to the boy. I'll have it, Issei said with a sincere smile making the blue haired girl blush at seeing him, he summarized his path and stopped in the center of the fight. How are you feeling, partner? Drake asked in his mind. A little nervous said the brown red to the dragon. Also, it's the first time I'm going to fight with a girl he said, a little unsure. Calm down, partner, for now you must be careful with her as the girl Ryofu said, this will test you so keep your guard up, said the red dragon with a warning tone to her carrier. Okay Drake, I'll take your word for it said Issei and then let out a sigh and looked at the purple haired girl. Long purple hair, blue eyes, breasts that are balanced compared to Hakufu-chan, Ryofu-chan and Mu-chan, a model's body and her uniform is provocative in conclusion, she is a beauty in every rule, MNN you can tell she has experience in combat and is very strong Issei thought. On the other hand, the purple haired girl was thinking. So it's the boy from that time MNN, although his hairstyle is different and more so with those red bangs, it's obvious he's not from around here, on the other hand, I feel a hidden power, but also warmth in him, how strange, why do I feel jealous of Ryan Ushime for wearing his shirt, could this be a feminine sense? Thought Kanu and then spoke up. Your name is Issei Haidu, right? I asked the brown haired red haired boy. The person who defeated the Nanyo fighters since the day of the imperial decree he said in a serious tone. Yes, I am and you must be Kanu Anchao Issei replied to the purple-haired girl. The famous rumored goddess of martial arts returned the same tone. I see you've heard of my reputation, Kanu said, unimpressed. The little said the brown red one. Is this your first time in a real fight? The purple-haired girl asked. Yes, I'm trying my luck at this Issei replied. I see, Kanu said, then got into a traditional karate stance. I hope you're ready because I won't go easy on you he said in a defiant tone. I say the same with you, yes, I will have no mercy, said the brown red man, while taking the Kaiaki Shinkai karate position. The orange-haired girl, the blue-haired girl and the referee of the fight, felt the intensity of the exchange of glances between the brown-haired girl and the purple-haired girl. The match between Nanyo Academy and Sido Academy, are you ready? Said the referee to which Issei and Kanu agreed. The second fight begins now while raising his hands to start the fight. Immediately, the purple-haired girl moved with superhuman speed to be in front of the brown-haired girl and kick him in the chest with her left foot, something that the boy reacted in time to use his arms in an X shape to block the blow, but that caused him to fly backwards until he crashed into a wall near the door where he and the orange-haired girl entered while raising a smoke screen. Poof. Issei Hakufu and Ryamu shouted worriedly. Oof that blow was a little stronger than Toshiji said a voice, so that everyone looked at the smoke screen that was created from the attack launched by the Sido warrior, and when it dispersed what they saw made them surprised, it was Issei who separated himself from the crater, as if nothing, he was cleaning the dust off himself, while parts of his clothes were somewhat destroyed. I turn I he said, and then launched himself at the purple haired girl with his left fist, but the girl formed her arms in an X shape to block the blow, but that caused her to be pushed back until she crashed into the bars. Anu quickly recovered and then sent a punch with his right fist to the brown-haired red-haired boy's face, who dodged it with a movement of his head. Then the purple-haired boy sent a vertical kick with his left foot that was stopped by the boy's right hand. The purple-haired girl began a series of punches and kicks against Issei who reacted by reflex, dodging and blocking her attacks with effort and then stopping the last blow from the Sido fighter. The boy held Kanu's left hand with his right hand and then kicked him with his left foot in the stomach, causing him to lose air and then receive a blow from an open palm from the brown-haired boy's left hand on the chest, sending him flying backwards until he fell on his back to the ground. With Cao Cao's faction. The group was very impressed with how the Sekar Yuite vs. The goddess of martial arts fight had started until the Grey Danger spoke. Oh, the fight between the Red Emperor Bearer has already begun, Heracle said with interest. Adding, he had told me that he was a new member of the faction, that he was not a fighter, and also I heard about him, that he awakened his sacred gear against an academy, that is a feat said Cao Cao, who had his arms crossed. Hey Cao, do you think Dragon Chan can beat the purple-haired girl? Jean asked her leader. MMMM from my point of view, he is still weak, however he has had training, and perhaps he will release all his potential, of course, he will not show the red gauntlet answered the black-haired man. What about the Hakufu Sansaku girls? The dark-haired boy asked monotonously. You're right, I want it in action now said the grey-haired man. It's not time to see her yet, since now is the time to see the potential of Sekiruite said Cao Cao. With the rest. The Khufu, Ryamu and the referee had their eyes wide open as they watched a fight between the brown-haired Ritid and the purple-haired girl. Surprising thought Hakufu who was surprised that her friend knows how to fight. 
He's done it incredible Ryamu thought in surprise when he saw that the brown-haired boy had landed a few hits on the purple-haired girl. But this say versus Kanu. You're the first to hurt me, Issei Haidu Kanu said as he stood up and then stood on guard. Tell me Issei said Issei as he took a breath and then exhaled before putting himself on guard. Let's continue he said to the purple-haired girl who agreed. At that, both of them lunged forward to start exchanging punches and kicks while evading or blocking. The brown-haired boy quickly ducked to dodge a vertical kick from the purple-haired girl and then punched the girl with her right fist, who stopped him with her left forearm. They both continued fighting for a few minutes before separating and taking distance as sweat bathed their bodies. When they caught their breath, Issei and Kanu were once again engaged in another round of punches and kicks, each blow they collided with caused the area to begin to crack from the force of the other's blows, at one point, the purple-haired girl wanted to hit the brown-haired red-haired boy in the chest with his right fist. But he held his arm and then applied a lock while holding his left arm and placing it on his back preventing him from moving. Kanu released her grip on Ella and then kicked Issei with her right foot on Ella, who arched back to dodge her but he did an apostrophe t wait for her to turn on her axis to kick him again in the chest, sending the boy flying and crashing back into the ground. The brown red put his hands on the ground as he lifted his feet up and then gave a push to then kneel as he stood up. You're good, but let's stop all this game Issei said more seriously. So you realized, well get ready because this time I'm going for real, Kanu said as an emerald green aura surrounded his body. Drag, it's time said the brown red to the red dragon. Alright mate said Drag. The brown red man began to release a red black aura as he summarized his fighting stance. The purple haired girl stared at the brunette, but inside she was surprised. As I assumed, his aura is similar to Rai Ubi's, but very different Kanu thought, and then spoke. I'm ready she said as she took her fighting stance. Yes, I see that said Issei. On guard they both said. With Cao Cao's faction. Everyone was impressed by the level of auras that had been released between the brown red and purple hair. Now, this will get you interesting said the leader of the heroes. But the rest. The orange-haired girl, the blue-haired girl and the referee were stunned to see the auras of both of them. They are releasing their auras Ryamu thought as she continued watching the fight, but for some strange reason, her body was beginning to heat up. Why do I feel excitement in my body? She asked herself while Hakufu felt the same as she rubbed her legs restlessly. The glow of their auras was much more noticeable in the sky which was about to become night, causing several people on the streets to see that. Back with Issei versus Kanu. Issei and Kanu stared into each other's eyes without looking away and flew in the same direction when they were in front of each other, they both stomped their right feet on the ground, causing a crater to form, and then they collided their fists with each other. Pool. That made the shock wave form a strong breeze, due to which the orange-haired girl, the blue-haired girl and the referee covered their eyes with their arms. The brown-haired boy and the purple-haired girl separated and then attacked each other again, only their blows were now almost three times stronger than before, and their speed had almost doubled. At one point, Kanu wanted to hit Issei in the face with his left fist, but he only spun on his own axis and then stayed behind the girl while turning his back to her. The purple-haired girl turned around to give him another blow with a spinning kick from her left foot, but then. B.O.W. She felt a pain in her stomach that made her spit out some saliva and blood, she looked down to see the brown red boy who was kneeling, who previously reacted by instinct to bend down and hit him with his left elbow. Anu moves away and then jumps to kick Issei with his right foot with an axe kick. Issei rolled forward to dodge the purple-haired girl's blow, which created a crater in the area. The brown-haired boy stopped at a distance to look at Kanu and then got up and ran towards her to give a flying kick with his right foot, which the girl narrowly dodged, but. Ross. Her uniform shirt was torn, exposing her breasts, suggesting she was not wearing a bra. Issei landed to turn around to attack, only to receive a powerful spinning kick to the stomach from the purple-haired girl who sent the boy flying, who quickly recovered and then spun around a few times before landing on his feet to regain his stance. She. The brown-haired boy had a trickle of blood coming out of his mouth, his left cheek was badly bruised and a few blows to the torso, but nothing major, Kanu was not unharmed either, she had a trickle of blood coming out of her mouth, her arms were too beaten up and her stomach area had received a good amount of damage, but her legs also hurt quite a bit. Not only from the exhaustion of constantly kicking, but from the brown-haired boy's blocks and arms. After that, Issei and Kanu launched themselves to attack each other again with fists and kicks while evading each other, the purple-haired girl gives a blow with her right fist on the right side of the brown-haired boy, who he counterattacked with a left knee to the stomach, the boy was going to give a direct kick with his right foot to the chest, but she blocked it with her left forearm. They continued fighting until the brown-haired boy jumped to launch an attack with his left fist at Kanu, which by instinct I jumped back so that. Pool. 
The Sei will hit his fist on the ground, causing it to form a hole the size of an almost large soccer ball, as well as leaving some cracks, then he gets up and then launches himself again at the purple-haired girl who did the same, so that both of them collide their forearms, causing them to push each other hard while looking into each other's eyes. The orange-haired girl, the blue-haired girl and, curiously, the referee held their breath as they watched the demonstration of the fight between the brown-haired girl and the purple-haired girl. As was the hero faction who was watching everything from a distance. After that, Issei and Kanu moved away, in a quick movement, the Sido girl reached the boy to start giving him a series of consecutive blows, which the brown-haired boy found difficult to avoid or block the attacks. Until the purple-haired girl with her left leg that is charged with her kai, gave him a blow in the stomach of the brown-haired red-haired boy, causing him to spit blood and grimace in pain, as he felt his intestine being abused in such a way that it sent him flying and crashing against the ground. Issei had gotten up with effort while taking his fighting stance and then launching himself towards Kanu, who was swinging quickly towards him, when she wanted to hit him in the face with her left fist, he stopped her with the open palm of his left hand, and then he gave a punch with his right fist towards the purple-haired girl, who received serious damage. DPOOWW. Iiii a Kanu flew away until he crashed against the bars that almost broke from the contact and fell to his knees on the ground. Dodge are you okay? Issei said tiredly and with a worried tone. Dodge ah yes, I am Kanu said in a weak and tired tone, as he stood up with difficulty. I must admit that ha this battle has been fun and amazing he said, while feeling a strange sensation in his body. Yes jaw same to you, I can say that you are the strongest fighter I have ever faced, said the brown red to Kanu, who swelled a little with pride at that compliment. Thank you, I can say the same about you, since no one has been able to keep up with my movements, said Kanu to the brown red who only smiled. Well, how about we finish this once and for all. Issei said as he got back into a fighting stance just like the purple-haired girl. Okay, said Kanu. And without wasting time, the brown-haired red-haired boy and the purple-haired girl launched themselves into the fight again, using all their strength and then starting to feel weak from spending all their energy. As the minutes went by, it became a normal fight, they were hitting each other and wouldn't stop hitting each other. Kanu gave them a blow with his left foot in Issei's chest, making him fall back to the ground, but then he gets up with great difficulty and gets into a defense position. The brown-haired boy and the purple-haired girl kept hitting each other and kept hitting each other, they didn't stop hitting each other until. Uwea said Issei and Kanu, and then gave each other a final blow with their left fists towards the right cheek of their faces. P.O.W. P.O.W. And they both fell on their backs to the ground and unconscious, we can see that the face of the brown-haired red-haired and the purple-haired had a smile of satisfaction. Of Cao Cao's faction. I see it ends in a tie, said Cao Cao, turning around. You're right, I'm dying to face him, said the descending heracles while they bumped their fists in excitement. Now what do we do, leader? Said the blonde. Return to our temporary base and continue with our mission to find out about the imperial stone, said the black-haired man who walked towards the door of the building, followed by the other members. With the rest. At the same time said Hakufu who was stunned by the fight. Yes, that's what it seems said Ryamu who is the same as the orange-haired girl. Then neither Kanu Anchao nor Issei Haidu can continue the fight, but there are two Nanyo warriors here, so, due to lack of fighters, Sido loses the match, and Nanyo moves on to the next round, said the referee, when he made an announcement after recovering from the surprise. Neither of the two Nanyo girls responded, as they were still stunned by Issei and Kanu's demonstration. After one minute, the orange-haired girl and the blue-haired girl felt a heat from their bodies mysteriously disappear, they recompassed themselves to take the brown-haired girl and the purple-haired girl to the hospital. All this is seen by a girl of age 16, her height is 155 centimeters, short disheveled almost spiky black hair, blue eyes, her skin tanned like the green haired but a little light, wearing an academic uniform consisting of a white short sleeved button down shirt with a red ribbon that is tied around her neck, along with a grey vest over it. A small skirt of the same color by which she showed her beautiful thighs that are on pair with the orange haired one, long stockings that reach almost to her knees and black and dark brown shoes, the most striking thing about this were the red weights that are tied at the wrists and ankles measurements. Chest. 80 waist. 55 hips. 83. She was sitting in a water tank for 10 minutes since the start of the fight between Nanyo and Sido, while on her face, she had an expression of intrigue and curiosity, since the previous days, she watched Issei from the roof of a building and in the afternoon by the bridge, since she felt a different energy in him. So he's preventing the supreme conqueror from rising again, he's someone very different from the other fighters and normal people, even though he's alien to destiny his power is high inside him, but it's not the Kai flow that you really are, Issei Haidu the girl thought, and then got up and jumped away from the place. Rikuyo Academy. Orchid Room. Ring ring ring. 
The black-haired girl with glasses checked her smartphone to read the message. Nanyo Zisei Haidu and Sido's Kanwan Chao had a tie, but due to a lack of warriors, Nanyo moves on to the next round Kaku reported. The dark brown-haired boy, upon hearing the report from his second-in-command, was somewhat surprised but did not show it. It seems that Issei prevented both warriors from destroying each other, what a pity said to Taku, and then stopped leaning on the legs of the brunette with glasses, while the green-haired girl had a surprised expression, since she did not expect the result of that fight. Raimu and Kanu, your combat skills are completely different, but the problem is that your sacred beads are compatible, said Kaku, while adjusting his glasses. Raimu is somewhat tired that I couldn't even hit her, Kanu was at 100%, so that Issei had a fight with her to prevent Sansaku from fighting, and they both used all their strength until they fell tired and unconscious, he said to his leader of her. I see, said the dark brown-haired boy as he looked at the orchid in his left hand. But on the other hand, I didn't expect Kane to appear, said the black-haired girl with a lens. I don't know why Injutsu keeps talking to a madman he said while the dark brown-haired boy removed a piece of orchid. Whatever said Ryofu sitting in Siza with her friend Alachinkyu who listened in silence. Nanyo will have to fight against the Kayasho Academy where Sasu is if Nanyo manages to survive with that, I will beat them in the final round he said with determination. At that, the dark brown haired boy laughed so that the green haired girl made a confused expression. The haha final round. No said to Taku while the bangs of his hair covered his eyes and then he looked up while turning his head and looking at the green haired girl along with the short brown haired girl who are in shock at seeing the dark brown haired girl's sickly sadistic smile. They won't be Ryofu he said in a sadistic tone. But what then Ryofu said is he had a bad feeling about this. Nanyo hospital night Issei's mind. Aw, oh, I didn't think my body would hurt so much despite being here, Issei said while rubbing his right arm. Your mind and body are connected, it's normal said Drake, who is in front of the brown-haired boy who let out a sigh. By the way, how long will it take for him to recover? Asked the brown-red. Before falling unconscious, I took the time to heal you, especially since you are a hybrid, so you recover in 10 minutes the red dragon replied. Thank you Drake Issei said with a smile. You're welcome Drake said in the same way. By the way, the girls have been worried for two hours I informed his bear about him. Okay said the brown-red boy and then closed his eyes real world. Issei slowly opened his eyes, his vision was blurry, and in a few seconds it cleared up only to see a white ceiling, he noticed that he was in the infirmary bed, he had a bandage on his head, several bruises and minor scrapes all over his body which were slowly disappearing, and finally a visible gauze on his left cheek. Suddenly, the door to her room opened to let in an orange-haired girl who was accompanied by the blue-haired girl, and when they were already inside. Issei said Hakufu as he went to hug the brown-haired boy. Ase was taken by surprise when his head was suddenly between the orange-haired girl's breasts. The blue-haired girl, seeing this, gets upset and then takes her right ear with her left hand and pulls it away from the brown-haired boy. Wow, Moochan it hurts, said the orange-haired girl who was complaining about the blue-haired girl pulling her ear. It's good that you woke up Ase, how are you? Raimu asked then released Ella's orange-haired girl's ear which he was rubbing with his right hand. I guess so, the pain has been decreasing Issei replied and then moved until he was sitting on the bed. That's great, the doctor told us that you wouldn't wake up until tomorrow or in two days because of your injuries, said the blue-haired girl in a happy tone, and she was also surprised by the brown-haired boy's resistance. I didn't expect you to be good at combat Issei Hakufu said excitedly. Who taught you to fight? I ask out of curiosity. Now that I think about it, where did you learn to fight? Asked Ryamu who is the same as the orange-haired girl to know what kind of training the brown-haired red-haired boy had. I've never seen anyone fight so quickly he said suspiciously. I would like to say it, but since it's late, it will be for another day, okay? Answered to say while the blue-haired girl only nodded her head while he thought. I'm not ready to say it yet it will be until the right time comes thought the brown-red. Mao you are so bad Issei said the strawberry-haired girl while making a cute pout, so Issei only laughed when he saw how funny she looked. By the way, what time is it? asked the brown red boy. At 7.52 pm Ryamu replied after checking the time on her cell phone. Thank you, Ryamu said Issei with a smile, so that the blue-haired girl blushed to turn away, so that the brown-haired red-haired girl wouldn't see her, and when she was sure she formed a blissful smile on her face, on the other hand the orange-haired girl felt oppressed by seeing the scene, in that, the boy remembered something. Kanu he said so that the two girls looked at him. What happened to Kanu? Both girls asked. Ryamu was somewhat annoyed and jealous by the brunette Riti's apparent concern for the purple-haired girl, but quickly dismissed it. He's in the next room Hakufu answered to the brown-red. Left to right side. Issei asked doubtfully. MNN the left side, I think she's not awake yet the orange-haired girl reported. I see said the brown-red one. Ring ring ring. 
the blue-haired girl a cell phone range, she took it out of her skirt pocket and then looked at the message. Well, tomorrow we will have to fight against the Kayasho Academy at the port near the pier, Ryamu said after reading and then putting it away. Do you think we'll survive the next round? Hakufu asked. It's possible Issei said as he got up from the bed normally. Can you wait for me at the hospital exit because I have to put on my clothes he said in a friendly tone to the two of them. The of course he said the frog-haired girl so that she and the blue-haired girl could leave the room. The brown red man waited three minutes to make sure that both girls were going to the hospital exit, he looked at his clothes that were folded on a small table, after changing, he went to the exit of his room when he turned to both sides of the hallway to make sure that there was no doctor or nurse passing by there and once checked, he went to the other room next to his. He slowly opened the door only to see the purple-haired girl lying on the stretcher with a bandage on her forehead, a band-aid on her right cheek and wearing a hospital gown, he entered the room and then slowly approached without waking her up. It's incredible that a beautiful girl like her is an expert high-level warrior, said Issei, while looking at Kanu, who was still sleeping. You're right about that, partner, she also has an overwhelming amount of Kai inside her, and her attacks are devastating, almost like steel, that could break bones in an instant said Drake, in a tone of respect towards the purple-haired woman. True said the brown red boy who unconsciously began to caress Kanu's soft hair, and after a few moments he began to caress her cheek with his left hand. Drake, how long will it take to recover? I asked a red dragon. To be exact, partner, the girl has limited her kai to Ella, as well as her symptoms of fatigue from using all her strength to Ella, I would say that she will wake up in three days answered Dragon Till. I think I have an idea said Issei. And what is that idea? The red dragon asked curiously. Drag, is there any way to speed up your recovery rate? Said the brown red man to the red dragon. Oh, so you want to help her, right? Said Drag, understanding the intentions of his bear. Yes, Issei said. Well, partner, since you still need to improve your physical condition, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do and I'll do the rest, said the red dragon to begin explaining to the brown red. Leaving the hospital. I'm back, said Issei as he approached the exit where the orange-haired girl and the blue-haired girl are. You took too long, Ryamu said to the brown red. Sorry, I was talking to the doctor, said the brown red-haired boy with a slightly lying tone. I understand, said the blue-haired girl who believed his words about him. Well, I'm going to accompany you to your homes, okay? Issei said to both girls. Yes sure said Hakufu and Ryamu at the same time. So, let's go said the brown-haired red-haired boy, so that he, the orange-haired girl and the blue-haired girl, began to walk through the streets of the night while he thought about the green-haired girl. What are you doing, Ryofu-chan? Issei pressed while looking at the moon. The Creo Academy. We can see a green-haired girl talking to a black-haired girl with glasses on a traditional bridge near a river. I don't agree with that Ryofu said in an annoyed tone to the black-haired girl with glasses. You still don't understand Kaku said and then took a quick look at the river. The tournament is the recreation of a historical event the tournament of great fighters only exists for that purpose, Tataku got the highest position of all the academies in the last tournament, this time, everyone is looking to overthrow Tataku of Rikuyo because he is exercising his authority from the top. If the sacred beads are controlling destiny, Tataku will be defeated in that tournament and will probably lose his life he said, so that the green-haired girl widened her eyes in surprise. Unless he goes against history, there is no future for Rikuyo or at least it is what he believes, therefore, he would never do something as idiotic as participating in that tournament, the only thing we want is for Tataku's enemies to kill each other, while weakening each other, he said to the green-haired girl who processed the information. But then how will we defend the position? said Ryofu only for the black-haired girl with glasses to look at him. Power and strength cannot be solved alone, all you have to do is follow and obey the orders of your superior, that's all said Kaku directly, and then turned around and walked. The Kaku said the green-haired girl with annoyance. I suggest you don't interfere or things could go very wrong, Ryofu Housen said the black-haired girl with glasses as she walked away leaving the green-haired girl still standing on the bridge, while a small fish jumped before returning to the river water. Ryofu only grunted annoyed by the brunette with glasses and then went to his room. When he entered, he sat in the Caesar position while staring into space. This Ryofu, are you okay? Said Chinkyu who was behind the green-haired girl who didn't say anything so he sat near her. You shouldn't trust that girl, Kaku, it's obvious that she's trying to sink you and become number two, the green-haired girl didn't like the last part. Number two said Ryofu and then took the short brown-haired girl's left hand and pulled her while grabbing her head to bring her towards her breasts. Ryofu Chinkyu said with a blush. Chinkyu, I have made the decision to be number one, said the green-haired girl, while the short brown-haired girl looked at her. Would you come with me? I ask. No matter what happens, I have already made the decision to follow her for the rest of my life, said Chinkyu with a smile and determination. 
At that, the green-haired girl and the short brown-haired girl slowly brought their faces closer until they kissed each other while they undressed their clothes. In the era of the romances of Three Kingdoms, Ryo Fuhausen was admired as the strongest warrior, his desire for power kept him constantly fighting and traveling non-stop where the war spread, he was the son of war also known as the General Wandering. Clarification after Chapter 7. One is say faced Kani where he defeated him without a problem, he was hurt although his condition as a dragon does not hurt him from the madman's blow. Through the fight between Ryamu versus Kanu, similar to the manga and an I'm canon, although with the same result. Three Cow Cow's group made an appearance from another building watching the Nanyo vs. Sido fight, where they will witness Issei's current power. For as Cow Cow said, Kanu has the level to face a high class and supreme demon. 5 Tataku is very interested in Issei what Kaku said. 6 Chinkyu suspects that his boss was in love with Issei. 7 Kakuten and Kayasho advance in a crushing manner, Sasu has a feeling that he couldn't unwrite. 8 Issei fights Hakufu instead, as his first official fight against Kanu. 9 Kanu is someone on the list that is secretly jealous, I know that she is thinking if there will be the birth of a trio of men who are reformed. Ryofu, Kanu and Akeno. Then once again the release of Aura can draw the attention of the factions, for the second time for the three more factions in Kao. 11 Hakufu and Ryamu felt hot at the accidental release of Dragon Hormone during their near climax. 12 Kao and his people discreetly retreat after seeing the result of the fight. 13 Another girl who also observed the fight and is interested in our protagonist. 14 Tataku and Kaku found out about the result of the fight between Issei and Kanu. 16 Issei secretly helps Kanu. 17 Kaku and Ryofu discuss Tataku's plan to end the tournament. 18 Ryofu and his right hand men have decided to leave Rikuyo. Chapter 8. Nanyo's Retreat and Goe's Sadness Part 1. Ryofu's Dream. The green-haired girl looked at something that left her surprised and bewildered at the same time, it was a battlefield where the sky was red like blood itself, and it was the city of Kanto more speciesism in the Rikuyo school, than which are destroyed, knocked down, and one or another craters where who. In the center there are five people who were hurt, as well as their clothes are damaged, while she got up to face each other, Ryofu recognized the four people and another who was unknown to her, since he was black-haired and wore Chinese attire, and had a spear that she has never seen before, that was covered in the blood of her rivals. Sausu, Hakufu, Tataku, and Ice Kun, Ryofu said. At that, the boy in Chinese attire jumped back with his spear followed by the Riti to continue the fight between them, while the dark brown-haired boy and an orange-haired girl in Berkser mode looked with hatred at the brown-haired boy who had the boosted gear activated. The green-haired girl was in shock at what she saw, she felt a pang of pain in her chest when she saw her state, she wanted to yell at him not to do it and that she would find another way to avoid that. Ice Kun Ryofu shouted with great concern to the brown-haired boy with red locks who turned to look at her. Please do an apostrophe t do it she said with tears coming out of her beautiful green eyes. Ryofu Chan said Issei as the green haired girl approached him until she stopped and gave him a big hug. I do an apostrophe t want to lose you, stay with me sniff Ryofu said through tears as she rested her head on her chest. The brown haired boy only reciprocated the hug while the green haired girl felt a warmth from being close to the boy, after a minute, Issei delicately separated from the hug. I've never liked seeing you cry, Ryofu Chan said the brown haired boy as he put his hands on her green haired girl's face and then wiped her tears with his thumbs. Forgive me for not being by your side, but you have to have a quiet life ahead of you he said, while separating his hands from the green haired girl's face and then turning around to see Tataku and Hakufu in berserker mode. It's time to end this he said while putting on a very serious expression as his honey eyes changed to emerald green to look at his rivals. Ice Kun, no Ryofu said with desperation in his tone as he tried to reach the boy, but it was too late as he lunged towards them and followed just like the dark brown and orange haired boy clashed aura between the three of them. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Aj Aj Ofu woke up agitatedly in broad daylight, where the sun shone with tears in her eyes, while trying to calm her breathing, while looking at the ceiling of her room, which is located in the Rikuyo Academy, after calming down and taking a deep breath she sat up despite being naked. What was that, that vision is so real that it is not a pure coincidence he thought and turned his head to the right to look at Chinkyu, who was still sleeping peacefully and peacefully with her naked body, then she went to record a jug containing water, but suddenly her right hand that was holding the jug began to tremble, causing it to fall to the ground as the water spilled. That small noise made her short brown-haired friend lover wake up. Ah, Miss Ryofu Chinkyu said to the hairdresser. Oh, did I wake you up? I slip said Ryofu who acted calmly to the short brown haired girl who shook her head and then saw the water spilled because of the green haired girl and went to get a handkerchief to clean it. Ice Kun what are you hiding? She thought while looking at her right hand while remembering the dream where the brown haired red haired boy whom the green haired girl is beginning to fall in love with is sacrificing his life to confront his former boss and the out of control orange haired girl. Is something wrong? Chinkyu asked the green haired girl worriedly. No, it's nothing Ryofu replied and then stood up as he headed to the sliding door of her room, while the short brown-haired girl looked at him with concern. I have little time told his subordinate. How City Cow Academy. Hallway. At the Cow Academy it was a school for girls, however, with the arrival of the new owner of the academy, it was mixed in such a short time, where the boys could study the three years of high school and go on to the university of the same name, but today we noticed a single person who was walking in the halls of school, who was being praised as if he were a king, it was Asamu Haidu. Asay's older brother, who was not at all happy at that moment. Why are you angry? Well you will see that banishing his younger brother took a weight off his shoulders, since he was finally a hindrance to the most powerful family that was going to be in the future, someone so perfect can not give luxuries to share glory with anyone, in front of his eyes, only inferior being since poor or with money is not up to him. He demonstrated it later in the entrance ceremony, that did not hesitate to destroy reputations of perverted duo that was Mistuda, and Motohama was passed false evidence with testimony from the senpai of the athletics and kendo club, where according to them that the boys had taken them while he was changing clothes in the locker room, one of the two defenders that they are lies. However Isamu showed him the digital camera that belonged to the black-haired lens, where he had the photo of the senpai, Sona Shitori Sitri and director vetoed both boys from entering any sports and non-sports club that caused the female sector to hate him almost completely, several boys were also victims of Isamu in his first week as first years. The brown-haired boy felt good about humiliating and mistreating others, he even had the nerve to sleep with his victim's girlfriend to feed his pride, his reputation within Kao who calls him the king of the academy, who is almost above Ria's Gremory and Sona Shitori Sitri, however inside he missed his younger brother, since without his punching bag, it was boring in that first year semester. Even if he had a new victim it was not the same, then by chance one of the second year senpai had heard a rumor in the Kanto region that a boy from our city was being the sensation among Nanyo and other schools, where he had easily defeated all the fighters in his school, and even defeated one of the four divas who had caught Asamu's interest from the rumor. Day after day I heard new information from the students he was seeing on Facebook and Twitter. The Samu when he found out the name of the person in the rumor, and it was none other than his former younger brother Issei, who had become popular in the Kanto region, for him they do not like what a piece of shit he calls Issei, also he he knew that his former little brother was not as strong as him, since he was not the typical bubblegum brother who has power who does not train. The brown-haired boy was trained by his parents, since Goru had paid enough money for the best martial arts that his son had taught, since Juzo refused to train, because in his eyes the old man does not deserve anything about the secret Haidu, the brown-haired boy threw his spoiled tantrum, where he accidentally killed a nanny who took care of him, since then he had become a sociopath to the core. Now currently taking out his cell phone to watch the broadcast of the Nanyo vs Kayasho fight where his former brother will be fighting, he prayed to any deity that he would not win the fight. Panto Port with Issei, Hakufu and Ryamu. It is already noon in Kanto City where we see the brown-haired boy with red locks, the orange-haired girl, and the blue-haired girl walking to the fight site which is the port, and when they arrived, they noticed that there were some fighters from different academies, among them are the representatives of the Kayasha Academy, and the referee of the match who had a dark brown spiky hairstyle. At that, the brown-red one met the dark one again. Hi, Tun Chan said Issei who received the dark-haired man who looked at him. Ah, hello Issei said Kakuten returning the greeting. I see you're getting ready to fight, aren't you? Said the brown-haired boy to the dark-haired boy. Yes, I am, and you? Said Kakuten. Also Issei said with a smile as Kakuten did the same. Do you know him? Ryamu asked the boy. Yes, me and Hakufu-chan helped him on the bridge since he was fighting with the fighters from Rikuyo Academy answered the brown-red. I see said the blue-haired girl. Ready to start. The match referee said formally. 
I'll fight first, said the orange-haired girl as she walked to the center of the fight, as did the dark-haired Kayasho. Both were ready in their positions, while being observed by the other people as a large plane passed overhead. MNN, this fight could be very exciting, don't you think? Said an afro-haired man with glasses on his head. Yes, but you know Issei Haidu of Nanyo is gaining fame when he had an intense fight against an experienced warrior like Kanyuan Chao of Sido, something that no fighter managed to hit her, for now, it is said that she is recovering from his injuries in the hospital, he said to a man with dark yellow hair that reaches his shoulders. And besides, he was with a girl Hakufu who destroyed all of Yashu's fighters in the courtyard of that academy, said his partner. Well, I just want to see Sausu fighting, said an afro-haired man with glasses on his head. Say, wish me luck, said Hakufu to the brown-haired red-haired boy who smiled while giving a thumbs up, giving a sign of support, which made the orange-haired boy happy that he encouraged her like that. I don't care how many there are, and that is say tied with Kanu, I will beat them all, said the brunette with an excited smile. Hey, I think I should be more modest, Kakuka said in a relaxed manner, next to him is Aosu, and behind them is Sausu who is sleeping while snoring. Companion Drake said to his host about him. What's wrong, Drake? Issei said to the red dragon. I feel an evil and negative energy that is hidden inside that dark reed, said Drake with a serious tone, while the brown red looked at the dark reed who was still sleeping. I guess he's the leader of Kaiasho, Sasu Matoku, said the brown red man with his arms crossed. It could be said the red dragon. It's best to see what happens he said while Issei agreed. Nanyo Academy against Kaiasho Academy, you may begin said the referee, while the orange-haired girl and the dark-haired boy looked at each other as a small breeze passed. Nice to see you Hakufu said with a competitive smile as he bumped fists with Kayasho's dark-haired man. Haven't you forgotten the basics? Kakuten asked the orange-haired girl. Of course not Hakufu responded with a smile while winning at the dark-haired boy who chuckled, so they were both separated to a considerable distance to fight. And when they are about to start. Oh, I see you arrived on time, said a female voice approaching, so that everyone present could look at her. The brown-haired and orange-haired girls widened their eyes in surprise when they saw the black-haired woman in office clothes. She it's the lady since that time Issei thought as he remembered that woman who was in the hallway where he went to visit her orange-haired girl's apartment. This is Kanzaki said Hakufu to the black-haired woman who was his neighbor. Hello Hakufu-chan said Mrs. Kanzaki who welcomed the orange-haired girl. What are you doing here? The orange-haired girl asked doubtfully. Well, I just came to see the fight, that's all answered the black-haired girl. Ah, I understand said Hakufu who understood that, but the brown-haired man noticed how the black-haired woman glanced at the black-haired man who looked back at her, only for her to nod. Something's wrong Issei thought to himself. Start shouted the referee so that the orange-haired girl would have to distract herself so that. Wham. The dark-haired Kayasho kicked her on the side of the calf in an aggressive manner, causing the girl to fall to the ground. Ah, what Hakufu said but did not continue talking because the dark-haired Kayasho kicked again and this time it was his shins, causing him to lose his balance as he fell to the ground. MNN, hey, what are you doing? He said while complaining. The black-haired woman noticed that the brown-haired red-haired man was looking at her with suspicion, she recognized the person's face as it made him familiar. Oh, how are you, young man? Mrs. Kanzaki said to the brown-haired boy. You look different than I remember she said to the boy. Yes, I don't expect to see you here ma'am Issei said distrustfully. And you didn't just come to see the fight, right? He said seriously. Ara, I see you caught me said Mrs. Kanzaki. How about we go to a secluded place so we can talk in private, okay? Said the brunette who was walking towards an alley away from everything. The brown-haired boy looked at her doubtfully but nodded and followed the black-haired woman. Meanwhile, the orange-haired girl was being mercilessly attacked on her legs by the dark-haired Kayasho. Hey, aren't you going to fight for real? said the afro-haired man with glasses on his head. You don't get points for how many times you knock them down, said the man with dark yellow hair. The Olo C said a fat-looking, black-haired man. You're giving the public a show he said, convinced. Huh? Both fighters already understood what he meant and looked at the center of the fight, he saw how the orange-haired girl tried to stand up, and despite the fact that she was wearing the skirt, she was showing her white underwear to everyone. Oh that's right, keep going Kakuten they said while looking lustfully while drooling. Did they say something? Issei said with a cold and dry tone that appeared behind those fighters who shuddered a lot. Ah, nothing buddy, it's nothing, haha ha, said the afro-haired man with glasses who was laughing very nervously. Well, you better said the brown-haired red-haired boy as he walked away so that the three fighters could let out a sigh. Ah man, I almost peed myself from fear, said the fat-looking black-haired man. Yes, after all, he is the person who brutally destroyed all the fighters in his own academy, said the man with dark yellow hair. 
Yes, he becomes protective of Sansaku could he be her boyfriend? Said the afro-haired man with glasses. It could be said to the man with dark yellow hair. Hey, what are you doing? Let me fight now Hakufu said on the ground while his legs had bruises. On the other hand, the dark-haired Kayasho just looked at the orange-haired girl without saying a word. Why are you playing with her? Kakuka asked while watching the fight. I don't know about that, Aosu said to his friend. The orange-haired girl stood up with difficulty, and then, the brunette hit her legs again, so that she fell to her knees again, showing her butt which was wearing her white underwear. The three fighters were going to watch it as spectators, but they felt a cold instinct, so they looked to the side, because the brown-haired red man was looking at them with his eyes half-closed, and then went back to watching the fight. He's paralyzing Hakufu's legs Ryamu thought. You've already made me angry Hakufu said in frustration as he tried to stand up. I'm not going to forgive you, here I come he said, but he couldn't stand up, he tried several times, but the result was always the same, falling to his knees. Huh? What, what's wrong with me? Ah he said, trying to get up. The damage has accumulated little by little until his legs are useless thought Drag and the blue haired girl. What's wrong? Why can't I move my legs? Move said the orange haired girl who was trying to move, but her legs wouldn't respond because of the pain. The dark haired Kai Asho looked at the black haired woman who only agreed. MNN I'm really sorry, Kakuten said in an apologetic tone to the orange haired girl. Nanyo cannot continue the fight, Kai Asho is the winner shouted the referee. F4 said the fighters present who were celebrating the announcement. Hey, wait a moment, I'm still fine said Hakufu, complaining to the referee who was typing on his cell phone. But not your leg said the referee with inference. I can't believe it said the orange haired girl as she punched the ground twice with her left fist. Calm down Hakufu-chan said Issei who approached the orange haired girl and carried her in his arms before taking her out of the fighting field. When you're in a fight, you don't have to get distracted because then you'll receive a lot of damage until you're unharmed, next time, try not to take your eyes off your opponent, okay? He said while the orange haired girl thought for a few seconds about the boy's words until she understood, so she agreed. Hey, tell us what the heck was that? Asked Aosu. MNN I don't know, they actually asked me to do that Kakuten replied while glancing at the black haired woman. Oh, I'm late for work, Mrs. Kanzaki said as she prepared to leave. Thank you very much young Kakuten, see you later he said and then left the place. No problem ma'am said Kakuten. I think there's a rumor that Kakuten liked older women, it was true, said the afro haired man with glasses. Huh? Kakuten said doubtfully while the brown haired boy and the red dragon inside him had to suppress their laughter at the comment. Well let's continue, Ryamu said as she adjusted her right glove to get ready to go fight. Good luck, Muchan Issei said with a smile. Thank you Issei said the blue haired girl with a slight blush, while the orange haired girl felt that tightness in her chest again from seeing that, and for the first time, she felt jealous. Warehouse Roof. The Cow Cow Group. Again the Cow Cow team with Saji to see the next fight of the Red Emperor team versus the Kayasho fighters which was also very interested, however the leader of the faction was a little strange since at that moment his warrior blood was boiling since in front of him was the current leader of Kayasho who was sleeping. The black haired man was eager to fight against one of the successors of the family, even though he had it sealed in the Magatama, so their mission is to dedicate themselves to observing the fight and watching the dark Reed who will be the target of the faction. The Creo Academy. In the orchid room, the dark brown haired boy took a purple and white orchid and looked at it for a few seconds until he got angry and then destroyed the orchid with his hands and threw it to the floor while stepping on it. Congratulations and New Year. The green haired girl and the short haired girl, who were already dressed in their Recreo Academy uniforms, came out of the sliding door of the traditional room and then. Haku said Ryofu along with his short brown haired friend lover who is somewhat tense seeing the black haired girl with glasses who was smiling arrogantly and was accompanied by three Kayasho fighters. Do you have any explanation for this, Ryofu? Kaku asked a green haired girl accusingly. What are you talking about? Ryofu asked the black haired girl with glasses. Not only did you ignore the order to execute Saji, but you also left him alive, Kaku responded with an arrogant smile that left the green haired girl in shock. Did you answer me why you met with Issei Haidu from Nanyo at the train station yesterday morning? Ryofu Hausen he asked in a threatening and superior tone. How did he know about that? He thought the green haired girl who was in the worst moment, the blonde didn't care if he was alive or not, but if it involved the brown haired boy with red locks. At the port. Ryamu vs Kakuten. In the center of the fight, the blue haired girl and the dark haired boy looked at each other, while a breeze of wind passed by. Come on Mu Chan, finish him off. He made me end up like this, so please destroy him, Hakufu shouted angrily while sitting on a chair, and her injured legs were in a bucket of water. The brown red one for his part just watched the fight with his arms crossed. What do you think will win this fight, Drake? 
Issei said to the red dragon. Well, buddy, I'd say the blue-haired girl will have the victory, although the brunette is good at fighting and defending, but she is a specialist in submission techniques, so watch said Drag. Start shouted the referee. The dark-haired Kayasho didn't notice that the blue-haired girl disappeared and appeared in front of him to make a quick move to trap him in a chokehold. Yu Kakuten gritted his teeth as he held back his Ryamu's legs, who was upside down, squeezed a little tighter around the brunette's neck, which his left hand opened and closed quickly. Don't you think that Kakuten looks very weak all of a sudden? Said the black-haired man with a fat appearance. Yes, it is very weak against strong grips, Aosu commented. I think Kakuten won't be so lucky with that said Kakuka. The blue-haired girl squeezed her legs a little tighter around the brunette's neck, who she continued to hold on. Ood Kakuten continued to scream his teeth until. Why, I give up ugh he said while his face turned blue and his tongue was out as the air escaped from them. I told you so said the red dragon while Issei just nodded his head. The referee was typing on his cell phone and the following was written on the screen. Ayasho's Kakuten suffers his first defeat against Nanyo's Raimu by strangulation. The blue-haired girl released her grip on the brunette who knelt down to catch her breath. The Kuka, I think it's your turn, friend said Aosu to the dull chocolate-haired boy. Yeah, I guess so, HMPH Kakuka said with a smile as he headed to the fight center. With Kao Kao's group. That blue-haired girl is too good at making a Kijin commented. Judging by the information Saji gave us, she's an expert at doing submission hold said George, putting his glasses on her. While the aforementioned watched the fight he had a slight smile, seeing that Ryamu easily defeated the dark-haired man, however he changed his expression of hatred when he saw the brown-haired man encouraging the blue-haired man that filled him with rage. Congratulations and New Year. Why did you bring so many men with you? It's a sign that you're said scared Ryofu in a mocking tone while putting on her brown shoes, the black-haired girl with glasses, for her part, was a little scared and then backed away a little as the green-haired girl stood up and got a little closer to her. Do I scare you? She said with a defiant expression to the black-haired girl with glasses, who was shocked by the green-haired girl's rebelliousness, but recovered in a second. Though you damn bitch, I'll give you an appropriate punishment Kaku said angrily and gestured with his head for his warriors to get into a fighting stance. This Ryofu said Chinkyu as he stood next to the green-haired girl. I'm going to take you to Tataku at all costs, said the black-haired girl with glasses, and when she was going to order her men to attack, the short brown-haired girl lunges at her to grab her right hand and then put her arm back and put her left arm on the black-haired girl with glasses neck in a sign of strangulation. W what are you trying to do he said with difficulty. At that point, a fighter wanted to get closer but. Stop right there said the short brown-haired girl in a warning tone for the fighter to stay still. If you move, I will break your neck without hesitation I shouted to the subordinates of the black-haired girl with glasses. Thank you, damn ugh said Kaku, while the short brown-haired girl squeezed her neck a little tighter. This Ryofu, go now Chinkyu said to the green-haired girl, but. Let her go said Ryofu when she left, so that the black-haired girl with glasses smiled while the short brown-haired girl just grew up, which had no choice but to let her go and then push her towards the dark-haired man and follow the green-haired girl. All right, I'll take you to him now, Kaku said in an annoyed tone as he adjusted his glasses. At that, the green-haired girl and the short brown-haired girl stopped. Do what you want, Ryofu said as he glanced quickly at the black-haired girl with glasses with an arrogant smile. But only if you can he said in an arrogant and seductive manner. Is that your answer? Asked the black-haired girl with glasses who was more than angry while six men surrounded both girls in a fighting pose, the green-haired girl only had a defiant smile, and the short brown-haired girl looked at her. Back to the port. Ryamuo vs. Kakuka. The brown-haired boy remembered the conversation he had with the black-haired woman a few minutes ago. Flashback during Hakufu and Kakuten's fight. What did you want to talk to me about? Issei asked after following the black-haired woman to a secluded spot. Fine, I'll be frank and direct I want you to lose the fight, replied Mrs. Kanzaki. Okay? Issei said with surprise and confusion. But why? What's wrong with that? The office worker asked. Listen, I can't tell you much, but you have to believe me, it's for Hakufu-chan's safety, said the black-haired girl. What do you mean? Said the brown red man with doubt. As I said, I don't have much time, for now I can only tell you to go with Hakufu-chan to her apartment, Mrs. Goey will explain everything in detail over the phone answered Mrs. Kanzaki, as she went back to watch the fight where everyone was. End of flashback. Did that have something to do with Hakufu-chan? Issei thought. B.O.W. The sound of the blow made the brown-haired boy come out of his thoughts to watch the fight. Araimu screamed as she was thrown backwards while trying to mitigate the force of the impact while making friction with her feet, but still. The O-O-W-W-W. 
She crashed into the wall of the fishing port, leaving a large crater where she crashed so that she fell to the ground while spitting out blood. Mauchinase and Hakufu said with concern. The blue-haired girl coughed up blood and then glared at the dull chocolate-haired boy as a large plane flew by, knowing he was out of her league. Don't hold a grudge against me, Kakuka said, then turned around to walk away. The Kuka from Kayasho, win the fight said the referee. The brown-haired red-haired boy knew that the dull chocolate-haired boy was strong and had easily defeated the blue-haired boy, so he went towards the blue-haired boy and then carried her in his arms and walked away from the center of the fight until he gently left her next to the orange-haired boy. Are you okay? Issei asked the blue-haired girl with a worried tone. A little, just that my stomach hurts a lot, Ryamu answered in pain while holding her stomach with her hands. He really went too far thought the brown-haired red-haired boy with an annoyed expression. It was obvious that he intended to hurt her, since he had his little revenge for the brunette's defeat of her, so partner teach him a lesson said Drake, so that the brown-haired red-haired man mentally approved. Who's next? Said the referee as the brown red-haired man walked towards the center of the fight to be face to face with the dull chocolate-haired man. Me, Issei said bluntly. So you are my next opponent Kakuka said calmly. Yes said the brown red while taking the jiu-jitsu position. Don't take it personally from what I'm going to do he said to his rival from the front. HMPH, we'll see Kakuka said with a confident smile while his hands are inside his pants pockets. You're lucky you had a draw with Kanuan Chao, but now I'll defeat you in one fell swoop Issei Haidu he said a little mockingly. If you can say Issei returning the mockery so that the chocolate haired boy would become serious. Start said the referee. The dull chocolate haired boy began to quickly kick the brown red boy who dodged them and also blocked them with his arms, he was going to kick with his right foot, but. POW. Issei hit his kick hard with his left fist, causing the dull chocolate haired boy to arch backwards as he stepped back and then got on guard while moving his left foot to rearrange his ankle bones. Buff Kakuka gave a snort of pain. The brown red man only summarized his jujitsu position. The dull chocolate haired man launched himself to attack Issei who only dodged his blows, when he dodged an axe kick, the brown haired red haired man took advantage to kick his right foot in the chest of the Kayasho fighter, causing him to step back, when the dull chocolate haired man recovered, he noticed that Issei was in front of him, in that. The Kayasho fighter attacked the brown haired red haired man with his fists who evaded them gracefully, and then grabbed the dull chocolate haired man's right arm, to kick his right knee three times, causing him to step back. Issei was again in front of the dull chocolate haired man who was going to attack but. Ah Kakuka shouted because the brown haired red haired boy grabbed his right ear with his left hand to pull him hard, the dull chocolate haired boy attacked him with his left fist, but Issei blocked it with his right forearm while hitting him in the chest with his right fist, as he also pulled back the Kayasho fighter's ear in time to kick his right foot to his right thigh, causing great pain. That almost broke the bone. Ah he screamed again because the brown haired red haired boy grabbed and pulled his right ear again, from which two lines of blood came out, the dull chocolate haired boy was going to hit, but the boy caught his right arm with his other hand, and then he threw the Kayasho fighter at a distance, until he hit the ground on his back. You're humiliating him, the fat looking black haired man said in surprise. I didn't even manage to land a hit on Haidu, said the afro haired man with glasses on his head. Issei just watched as the dull chocolate haired boy got up with difficulty, despite the fact that his right leg and ear hurt. What's wrong, are you tired? Said the brown haired red haired boy with a sly smile. Amit Kakuka said angrily to the boy who just looked at him, while he took his jujitsu pose again, and with his left hand, made a gesture for him to attack, provoking him. Uwa she shouted furiously and then launched herself towards the boy. The brown red haired boy saw the dull chocolate haired boy approaching, while everything around him became slower, so he took a step to the right to dodge the Kayasho fighter's right fist, then held his right arm, and then hit his right knee three times with his left foot. And when time returned to run normally for the boy to release the dull chocolate haired boy's arm, who fell to his knees due to the pain in his right leg, he gets up to then attack Issei quickly. Evading the blows and then giving a series of blows with his fists and elbows towards the dull chocolate haired boy's chest, and then moving away and turning around to kick his right foot towards his stomach, that knocked him off the ground, making him fly, and then falling on his back to the ground. Ah Kakuka screamed in pain, while the brown haired boy went to get a safe distance, and then got back into a jujitsu position. Kakuka said Aosu at the state of the dull chocolate hair. You ug damn, that was like his blows were like steel Kakuka said to himself as he stood up with great difficulty, but collapsed to the ground, he tried to get back up, but in the end, he could NT. I see that the patella and femur of your knee are almost broken Issei said, so that the dull chocolate haired man would look at him. And your kai wears out quickly, so there's no point in continuing to fight you, because your overconfidence weakens you a lot, he said in an indifferent tone. How? Kakuka said while frowning. 
it's better that you give up and that way you can recover after this, said the brown-haired red-haired boy as he began to turn around to go walk, but the chocolate-haired boy was fueled by anger at the brown-haired boy's words from him. No I still won't be defeated by a damn rookie like you, not yet Kakuka said screamed while ignoring the pain in his body and then getting up and launching himself towards the brown-haired red-haired boy. Careful Issei Hakufu and Ryamu said with concern. Issei, at first, felt that the dull chocolate-haired man was approaching, so he let out a sigh and quickly turned to crouch and dodge the Kayasho fighter's blow that was going straight for his face. Ah Issei shouted to give. Puwa. Uukakuka shouted with his eyes wide open, almost popping out as the boy punched him in the crotch with his right fist, immediately causing all the men present to clench their legs as it hurt even them and at the same time sending the dull chocolate-haired boy flying far away until. The OOWWW. Crashing into the wall the same thing happened to the blue-haired girl while creating a cloud of dust and when it dispersed we see the dull chocolate-haired girl who is unconscious in a large crater and after that he falls heavily to the ground. Everyone present was in shock at what they saw including Cow Cow's group and what they were watching on their cell phones, but someone was not happy, it was Isamu who shouted in anger while hitting the school wall. H he beat Kakuka the boy H he beat him, said three fighters with their jaws open and their eyes wide open. The brown red man kept his gaze fixed forward where the unconscious dull chocolate haired boy was, then he stood up and shook his hands. Well is no one going to say anything? said Issei while raising an eyebrow at how everyone was in total silence at what they had just until witnessed one spoke up. I say from Nanyo is the winner of the fight said the referee after getting out of his state of shock and then typing on his cell phone to send a message what the brown-haired man did to the dull chocolate-haired man. At that, a dark-haired boy stood in front of the brown-haired red-haired boy as he prepared to fight, although he felt nervous about how he defeated his partner, but the boy only preferred to leave the center of the fight and return to where the orange-haired and blue-haired boy were. Hey, there are still two Kayasho fighters left said the referee until the brown red man stopped in his tracks. Nanyo Academy withdraws from the tournament, said Issei without looking at the referee and the others. Hey. Everyone present shouted in surprise and shock. But the Cow Cow group. He was also in the same state as he had not expected that unexpected turn, although Cow Cow and Saji did not think the same. It was entertaining too, Issei said as he gave a quick glance to the referee. I'm satisfied because I've already had a good fight he said as he summarized his walk. I understand Nanyo withdraws, Kayasha wins this duel said the referee. That statement confirmed that Nanyo Academy had been withdrawn from the competition they had lost. We lost to Kufu said sadly as he pulled his legs out of the bucket of water. True, but there are more important things than winning, said the brown-haired red-haired man to the orange-haired woman. And what is it? Hakufu said, a little confused. It's to prevent you, as well as Mu-chan and Gakushu from being affected by this tournament, Issei said to the orange-haired girl who understood that. I understand, Hakufu said. It's over Sausu Osu said while carrying an unconscious dull chocolate-haired boy while the dark retreats stood up while yawning. They are the only ones who could beat Tataku he told his leader. The Kayasho fighters were preparing to leave as they were those present, at that, the dark redeed looked at the three young men from Nanyo, especially the brown red one to give him a narrowed look, and the boy looked at him neutrally, after glancing at each other, the dark redeed left with his companions. What was that? Hakufu said doubtfully. I do an apostrophe t recognize him he said to his friend. This is Sausu Matoku, the leader of the Kayasho Academy essay said to the orange-haired girl. And why was he looking at you like that? Hakufu asked out of curiosity. I don't know, the brown-haired red-haired boy replied, although he had a feeling that he would have to fight the dark redeed later on, along with another guest. So we lost, right? Ryamu said as the pain in his stomach slowly disappeared as he thought. I can't face Ryofu I thought with frustration. Yes Issei said to the blue-haired girl. Why did you fight against Kakuka? Ryamu asked the brown-haired red-haired boy. I was upset to see that you were bleeding Mu-chan, just seeing what he did to you, I felt like hitting him Issei replied. Issei Ryamu said blushing a lot while making a small smile as she felt strangely happy that the brown-haired red-haired boy cared about her. Well, we have to get out of here said Issei as he went to carry the blue-haired girl in a bridal manner who was surprised but felt happy about it. The Kufu-chan, get on my back and I'll carry you since you haven't recovered from the wounds on your legs, yet he said as he turned around until he was on his back and then bent down so that the orange-haired girl could get on his back without hesitation and put his arms around the brown-haired boy's neck as well as his legs hugging his waist. Issei felt the orange-haired girl's breasts pressing against his back as he blushed and then recompassed himself, got up and left while carrying the orange-haired girl and the blue-haired girl who felt a pleasant warmth. I can't believe what I'm doing he thought with a mental smile. Where are we going? Hakufu asked the brown red. 
We will go to the hospital to visit Kakushu, but Issei answered while he paused. But. Ryamu said doubtfully. But first we'll stop by the bakery to bring you a piece of cake, said the brown red boy. And also for Kanu he thought since he also wanted to bring something to the purple-haired girl. With Cao Cao's group. I didn't expect that new turn, the Red Emperor is retreating said Hercules, regaining his composure. Well, it's understandable, his team is hurt and he was in good condition to fight the magician analyzed. He also gave us a different style of fighting than yesterday the maid commented animatedly. While blonde in his usual academic clothes he was watching them clearly annoyed while clenching his right hand. Am you say hi do, why are Mu Chan and the Supreme Conqueror come with someone who doesn't even have a Magatama, as well as having a relationship with Ryo Fu Chan, this won't stay like this, I'll make you fight with Tataku to see if you have the courage to do it, Saji thought with anger and malice. Hey, I have a question said Jean, everyone was looking at him, and the blonde came out of their thoughts about him. What is your question, Jean Chan said the blonde saying his partner's new nickname that doesn't bother them. What if the participating academy fighters are eliminated and now Kayasho Academy is in the finals? Ask Maid Orleans to former Nanyo. As things stand, Saosu's group is facing Rikuyo Academy Saji replied as he took out a cigarette to smoke. Hao Kao continued with his arms crossed as the fight ended, he was very curious about the Dark Redeed's fighting style, but unfortunately it didn't happen, although he did have that powerful dragon presence and spirit of his successor. So Saosu Matoku is the reincarnation of my ancestor, I hope to meet you to have a battle between you and me, thought Kao Kao. I imagine that tournament woe and apostrophe t continue, said the black-haired man to his group. What do you mean, Kao Kao? Asked a descendant of the Greek hero. We'll know later, since we'll be keeping a close eye on any Saosu group that might pass by the red-haired man responded to the grey-haired man. The hero group then left there. The Samu. The older brown-haired boy had calmed down after being his former younger brother's first victory, as he hated to admit that Issei knew how to defend well, he wonders to himself if his grandfather Juzo was related to the Haidu fighting style. When he saw his brother's unexpected turn of withdrawing from the fight, according to his criteria he had the advantage in his favor, however he did not worry about the well-being of the orange-haired and blue-haired, Isamu looked with pure lust at the body of both Nanyu fighters, but now it was Issei. Ahahaha, Issei is a coward, he scorns an opportunity to advance, and that is why he will always be a failure, said Isamu between laughter and mockery towards his younger brother. I just hope it's summer so I can visit, let's see how much you've improved. Said the brunette, putting his cell phone in his pants and continuing on his way to the student council where his current fiancée was waiting. Nanyo Hospital. Gakushu's room. What matters about a cake is its freshness said Gakushu who was in bed after eating the vanilla chocolate cake that was brought by the brown-haired red-haired boy, the orange-haired girl and the blue-haired girl, the muscled man has a bandage on his left arm, a band-aid on his right cheek and gauze on his forehead, as well as on his arm. Sansaku, could you bring me some tea? He said to the orange-haired girl. Yes, haha <laughs> Hakufu said cheerfully as he left the room to go to the drinks vending machines. It was a great achievement that they reached the semi-finals, said the black-haired man. Yes, without Ryamu we would never have gotten to that point, Issei said as he looked at the blue-haired girl with a smile, causing her to tilt her gaze slightly with a small blush. I'm surprised that you fought Hanu yesterday and ended in a draw said Gakushu as I found that incredible. As well as defeating and humiliating Kakuka of Kayasho he said with some respect to the brown-red. Yes Issei said until he remembered something. Kakushu, is there something you should know about what I'm going to tell you? He said to the muscle man. MNN, what about? Kakushu said while arching his right eyebrow. It's about a madman named Kane, said the brown-haired red-haired boy making the blue-haired boy and the muscled man pay attention to him. Kane? Ryamu said, remembering the crazy fighter. Yes, he appeared out of nowhere and was going to kill Hakufu chan Issei said seriously. Was it by order of Injutsu? The muscled man asked and the brown-haired red-haired man responded with a nod. How strange, that order was withdrawn a long time ago, said the blue-haired girl suspiciously. That's what I thought, he showed me the message on his phone from him, and what's more, that order has the date of the tournament day said Issei doing the same action as the blue-haired girl. MNN, I understand said Gakushu and then crossed his arms. I don't think Kane would deliberately make up such things, Ryamu said as she placed her left fist on her chin thoughtfully. Injutsu has been doing very strange things that even I can't understand, I think it's time to visit him in person, said the black-haired man with his arms crossed. But I heard that he is locked up, said the blue-haired girl to Gakushu. It's ridiculous and shameful that the leader of our academy hasn't shown up for six months, Gakushu said in a serious tone. And if you don't want to receive me, I will enter by force he said to the brown-haired girl and the blue-haired girl. After the conversation, the orange-haired girl entered the room while carrying four green cans in her arms. 
There were a lot of things in the machine, so I bought them all said Hakufu, while placing the four cans on a small table. Those teas look too weird Drake said in his mind. It shows a say said while looking at the four strangely shaped cans. Herbal tea, aloe tea, bitter tea, turmeric tea what is that? She asked her friend about her. I don't know said the orange haired girl who looks the same as the brown haired red haired girl. What kind of vending machine did you go to, Hakufu chan? Said Issei say while the orange haired girl just smiled innocently. Tell me one thing said Gakushu while taking a can of green tea, then opening it and looking strangely at the drink. Haven't you heard anything about Saji? I asked curiously. Just that hearing name from the blonde, the brown haired red haired boy and the blue haired girl made a face of annoyance, so the girl with the eye patch spoke up. No, that fool is probably just doing his thing, who knows Ryamu said while massaging his forehead with his right hand. I see, it's always like this said the muscle man, and then drank the green tea, but in a few seconds, his eyes widened and then. You oof. He spit the drink out of his mouth, causing it to soil the bed sheets. What the hell is this? Gakushu shouted after spitting out the horrible taste of green tea. It's coming out of your nose, Issei said as he pointed with the index finger of his left hand, while trying to hold back his laughter. Ahahahaha Drake laughed at that. Ahahaha, Gaku-chan, how disgusting said Hakufu while laughing while Ryamu laughed silently. At that, the brown-haired boy thought of the purple-haired girl, so he walked towards the door with a small box of cake in his hands. Huh? Where are you going, Issei? Asked the orange-haired girl while Ryamu and Gakushu looked at the brown-haired boy who hid the small box behind his back and made up a small excuse. To the bathroom since I feel a little sick, I won't be long answered Issei. Ah, okay Hakufu said as the brown-haired boy left the muscle man's room, although the blue-haired girl seemed a little suspicious about that. As he turned a corner, Issei calmly walked to the room of a person he needed to visit. Anu's room. We saw the purple-haired girl who was reading a small book in her bed, she had her Najinata next to a table near the bed, she felt much better and more recovered, that seemed strange and surprising at the same time, when she was still asleep in bed since yesterday, she felt a pleasant and even exciting energy that healed the wounds on her body, something she never imagined, in that. Knock knock. She heard some knocks on her bedroom door, so she spoke. Who is it? Asked Kanu. Um, it's me Say, can I come in? Issei said from outside the room so the purple-haired girl calmed down after recognizing that voice. Sure, go ahead said Kanu. Excuse me the brown-red boy told me as he entered the room. What are you doing here, Issei? The purple-haired girl asked out of curiosity. I came to see you Issei replied. Yes see me? Kanu said as a light blush appeared on his cheeks. Yes, I was worried that I had hurt you more than I should have said the brown-haired red-haired boy while sitting on a chair near the purple-haired girl. How are you? I asked with interest. Well, to tell the truth I didn't expect to be hit like that said the purple-haired girl, while touching her stomach with her left hand. Sorry, I think I exaggerated the blow a little Issei said with an apologetic tone. It doesn't matter, in fact, it was something surprising when you fought Kanu told me. Yes since we just met yesterday, I thought you were the leader of Sido, said the brown-haired red-haired boy, so that the purple-haired girl raised her eyebrow. I? Kanu said, pointing at herself with her right hand's finger as she shook her head. No, I'm just a high-level warrior of Sido, what did you think I was the leader? She said curiously to the boy. Well, for your strength, your determined look, and also because you were the only Sido participant in the fight against Nanyo, said Issei until. PRRRR. The purple-haired girl's stomach grew, making her feel ashamed of herself. It seems like you haven't eaten anything Issei said. W well the food in this hospital is soft, said Kanu while looking away. I brought you something, said the brown-haired red-haired boy to the purple-haired girl. For me? Said the purple-haired girl doubtfully. Yes, I hope you like it said Issei as he took out a small box, while he handed it to the purple-haired girl who took it with her hands and then opened it, revealing a piece of vanilla cake with strawberry. Thank you Kanu said to the brown-red boy as he began to eat the piece of cake. You're welcome Issei said. Gosh, I have to go now he said after checking the time on the clock on the wall. Before you go, here said the purple-haired girl when she had stopped eating while she took something out of the pocket of her skirt that is on the table where her Najinata is, and then handed something to the brown-haired girl. My cell phone Issei said when he saw his black cell phone from him and then took it with pleasure. Ryubi asked me to return it to you if I found you said Kanu. Consider it as a token of gratitude and respect he said to the brown-red. Thank you, Kanu-san Issei said with a smile, so that the purple-haired girl had a slight blush on her cheeks. It's cute thought Kanu and then spoke. By the way, Issei would I ask you please? I asked a brown-haired red-haired boy. Of course, if it's within my reach I'll do what I can said Issei. I would like it if you could train with me when we meet and maybe we can talk about some things, how about that? 
said the purple-haired girl. That would be an honor, said the brown-haired red-haired boy in a kind manner with a small bow, so that the purple-haired boy would smile. Well, see you later Kanu-san and get some rest he said to the purple-haired girl. Yes, see you say said Kanu, while the brown red boy gets up and then leaves the room. The fighter alien to destiny, it's the first time I feel calm when I'm around him, something inside tells me he's different from the rest of the men of Kanto she thought after finishing eating the piece of cake, while putting both hands behind her head to look at the ceiling calmly. His aura is that of a dragon as well as the enormous power within him, I would like to know more about him she said in the tone of a schoolgirl in love. Chapter 8. Nanyo's Retreat and Goe Sadness Part 2. How Academy. Club of the Occult. Inside the occult club, there were five people who were students of the same academy, she was a small girl of about 15 years old with white hair and hazel eyes, in the front, her hair has two long bangs that go beyond her shoulders, and several loose bangs hanging over her forehead, while the back has short hair, and also wears a black cat-shaped hair clip on both sides of her head. She wears the female uniform of Kuo Academy, albeit without the shoulder cape, and her body measurements are B67W57H73 cm. This is Kaneko Toju Rook first years. The second is a girl around 15-16 years old with long blonde hair and green eyes, her hair flows down to her back, with bangs parted over her forehead, and a single lock sticking out from the top and leaning back, she also has the female uniform, and her body measurements are B8385W55H8183 cm. It's Asia Argento Bishop second years. The third is a handsome young man with short blonde hair, blue eyes and a mole under his left eye. He wears the Kuo Academy male school uniform, which consists of a black blazer with white accents over a white long-sleeved dress shirt with a black ribbon at the collar, matching black pants, and brown dress shoes. He is Kibuya Udo Knight second years. The fourth is a beautiful young woman with a voluptuous figure, very long black hair and violet eyes. Her hair is usually tied in a long ponytail, which reaches down to her legs, with two strands sticking out from the top and leaning back, with an orange ribbon holding it in place. He also wears a female uniform, and his body measurements are B102W60H89 cm. She is the vice president of Keno Himajima Queen third year. And the last one is a beautiful young woman with a voluptuous body, white skin, blue eyes and long crimson red hair, and like all of them she wears the female uniform, and her body measurements are B99W58H90 cm. President Ria's Gremory King third years. The five are demons from the Gremory clan, one of the 72 pillars of the underworld, and who control the city with the Citri clan, but now she was watching the Kanto tournament on social media, Riaz was more than interested in that tournament, since she needed to find a candidate to be her missing piece to be able to face Riser Razor in a raiding games to get out of her commitment. However, the Ridi did not know how she was going to get to Kanto, since it was a territory not inhabited by the other demon clans, which is a very dangerous place, then she had heard a rumor that King Kao's brother did not enter the academy, and so he had to enter Nanyo, that took Ria's interest in that rejected entrant, and he turned out to be Issei Haidu, Asama's brother. Riaz was seeing the abilities of Brown Red during their tournament fight, she had surprised him, and even Kaneko was a tower, besides she had a hunch that it was a Long Inus type sacred gear or not, but she wants it for her peerage, however she did not realize that peace would not withstand the current power of Sekiruyute. Back to the hospital with Issei. The Brown Red boy was walking down the halls and when he was about to cross the corner. Where were you, Issei? A female voice asked making the boy gasp, he turned around to find Ryamu who had her arms crossed and was accompanied by the orange-haired girl who was also looking for him. Yes Issei, where were you, I was worrying that something would happen to you, Hakufu said to the brown red. W well, I, us uh, said Issei who didn't know what to say. He went to Kanu, right? Ryamu said so the brown-haired red-haired boy let out a sigh since they knew about that. Yes, I'm sorry, I just couldn't help but visit her to see if she was okay, said Issei, while he put his hands together in apology. Okay, I forgive you for this occasion, said the blue-haired girl after listening to the brown-haired red-haired boy's explanation. Hey Issei, Hakufu said. Yes Hakufu-chan said the brown-haired red-haired boy to the orange-haired girl. I wanted to know if you could accompany me to do the shopping, said Hakufu to the brown-red. Of course why not said Issei with a smile, so that the orange-haired girl felt happy with a blush. The blue-haired girl was jealous to see the scene and decided to do something, she approached the brown-haired red-haired boy and then. The USA said with his eyes wide open in surprise and a blush as Raimu took his right arm from her and then hugged him and put it between her breasts while she thought. The feeling of Mu Chan's breasts is incredible the brown-haired red-haired boy said mentally. Hey, what are you doing? Hakufu asked in a jealous and annoyed way seeing the scene. Simple, I'm hugging Issei since he promised me that he would invite me to eat Ryama responded with a wolfish smile in front of the orange-haired girl, who was fuming with jealousy. 
Ah, that's right Issei said after remembering the promise he had with the blue-haired girl from yesterday. Wu-chan, let go of Issei said Hakufu as she approached the brown-haired red-haired boy and the blue-haired girl, and then hugged the boy's left arm and put it between her breasts. Oh Hakufu-chan's breasts are soft, Issei thought with a blush as he felt it. Ah. And why would I do that? Ryamu asked while arching his eyebrows. Because you're cuddling him, Hakufu replied accusingly. And what's so bad about that, silly? said Ryamu, who held on tighter to the brown-haired red-haired boy's right arm. You called me stupid stupid eye patch," said Hakufu with annoyance, so that the blue-haired girl got angry too. Who are you calling stupid with the patch, brainless idiot? Ryamu said with annoyance to the orange-haired girl. What did you call me? said Hakufu angrily, she was about to explode. What you heard, Ryamu said smugly. Partner, you should calm them down before they start a fight, said Drake to the brown-haired red-haired boy, who swore he saw how the orange-haired girl and the blue-haired girl were shooting rays at each other with their eyes. Okay girls, calm down, how about we go shopping together, and we'll go to Hakufu-chan's apartment, and from there, we'll prepare dinner as a celebration for our fight, okay? Said Issei making the orange-haired and the blue-haired look at him after hearing those words. Porks Hakufu said animatedly. And you Mu-chan? Said Issei to the blue-haired girl who blushed. W well, if you say so, it's fine Ryamu said almost in a sad tone. Then let's go said Issei and then started walking towards the hospital exit with the orange-haired girl and the blue-haired girl, who were still hugging their arms calmly, even though they were both throwing lightning bolts at each other. With Ryofu and Chinkyu vs Kaku group. The day is getting dark, at the Rikuyo Academy, we see the green-haired girl and the short brown-haired girl who were panting from exhaustion after defeating the dark-haired men who are on the ground unconscious and knocked out with some bruises, as well as blood coming out of their wounds, the black-haired girl with glasses, for her part. Looked at both girls in an annoyed way while clenching her fists. You won't be able to escape from Tataku, Ryofu House and Kaku said angrily to the green-haired girl. Ryofu House and Ryofu said with a smile and then let out a small laugh. Yufufu, you will never know how much I had to suffer for that name he said, while the short brown-haired girl looked at him. I think it's better for me to just accept my destiny and obey it, that seems much more dignified to me than Tataku who is acting cowardly he said while thinking about the brown red. I have to tell my feelings to Ice Kun before it's too late Ryofu thought with determination. DSK Kaku muttered in annoyance at those words. After that, the green-haired girl and the short brown-haired girl leave the place. Is it okay that you would leave Kaku? Chinkyu asked the green-haired girl doubtfully. Yes, I'm already declaring war against Ataku, I need someone to deliver my message to him, replied Ryofu, who continued walking. She she's really gone crazy, she she's a stupid girl said Kaku, as he looked at both deserting girls walking away, while a breeze of wind moved his hair. But this say, Hakufu and Ryamu. The three young people are walking at night after shopping at a supermarket with the money they had, it may not have been enough to pay for more things, but they got what was necessary, the brown-haired red-haired boy was carrying two bags in his hands, although the orange-haired and blue-haired girls were also carrying a bag each, since they were not the type of girls who let the man carry everything. The Khufu Department. The brown-haired red-haired girl, the orange-haired girl and the blue-haired girl had arrived at the first girl's apartment. The orange-haired girl took out the keys from her skirt pocket, causing her to let out a sigh of relief, since she thought she lost it during the tournament. She opened the door lock and then opened it. The brown-haired girl and the blue-haired girl went in, so that the orange-haired girl could enter last, and then closed the door. So this is where Hakufu lives, Ryamu said as he surveyed the place. Let's leave the bags in the kitchen said Hakufu. Hainase said. After that, the three of them went to the kitchen to place the bags on the counter next to the refrigerator. Ugh, I'm so thirsty, I'll see what's in the refrigerator irator Issei said as he opened the refrigerator only to find. Oh he felt an unpleasant smell in his nose. What's wrong Issei? Ryamu said to the brown red boy who was silent and in a few seconds he spoke. The Khufu chan said Issei in serious toho. Forks. Said Hakufu I don't understand the serious look of brown red. When was the last time you bought food? Issei asked. MNN let me think said Hakufu while putting an index finger of his left hand on his chin, as if thinking about it until he remembered. Ah, I remember now, it was the day you brought my academic uniform he replied as if nothing had happened. Are you serious? Issei said in surprise at the orange-haired girl's words. Yeah, haha <laughs> Hakufu said with a nervous and embarrassed smile, while scratching the back of his head, making the brown-haired red-haired boy and the blue-haired girl sigh while shaking their heads at how clumsy the orange-haired girl was. Now I understand why the refrigerator is almost empty Issei said, and then closed the refrigerator. Well I think I'll have to cook rice with fish and bacon he said, while taking the ingredients out of the bag. Do you know how to cook? Ryamu said out of curiosity. 
Yes, it's not for nothing that I make my own food, and Bento said Issei feeling some memories of how his parents and Isamu went to eat at luxury restaurants while he had to make his own food on his own. Do you want me to help you? Ryamu asked the brown red. Of course Mu Chan Issei answered with a smile so that the blue haired girl blushed. I'll help you too, Hakufu said happily. And after that, the three young people began to make preparations for dinner, after an hour, the brown-haired red-haired boy, the orange-haired boy and the blue-haired boy, had finished arranging the dishes on the table, and sat on the chair at the table. I did Akamasu said Issei, Hakufu and Ryamu, and then took the chopsticks to start eating. Why this is delicious, said Hakufu happily as she ate the food prepared by the brown-haired red-haired boy, the blue-haired girl and her daela, quite quickly, as if it were quite good food instead of a regular meal. I must say, it's good Issei or Ayamu said while calmly devouring the food. I'm glad you like it said Issei who was also trying the food while thinking about his grandfather Juzo who he hasn't called. Ah, I almost forgot said Hakufu thoughtfully then stopped eating and in a few seconds began to speak. Issei, Mu Chan he said to the two mentioned who had stopped eating for a moment. Yeah, what's wrong? Issei said to the orange haired girl as well as Ryamu to her friend rival of hers. In a few days I will go to Akutama Mountain to visit my grandfather said Hakufu. Your grandfather? Issei said out of curiosity as Ryamu said. Yes, before coming here to the city, my mother gave me the address where she lived said Hakufu. Ah, I understand Issei said. But it would be dangerous if you go alone to that place, so, I will accompany you on that day he said to the orange haired girl. Really? Hakufu asked the brown red. Of course Hakufu-chan Issei answered with a smile, making the orange-haired girl feel happy with a blush, but the blue-haired girl who was jealous about that decided to speak. If you guys go, I'll go too, Ryamu said to the brown-haired red-haired girl and the orange-haired girl who forced a smile, while looking at the blue-haired girl who was also looking at her. Don't even think about it Mu-chan, you won't get close to Issei Hakufu thought with jealousy. I won't leave you so easily, full thought Ryamu who refuses to lose the orange-haired boy. The Kyo Academy Orchid Room. I'm so sorry said Kaku to the dark brown haired boy who was turning his back on him while he was cutting the orchids with scissors and on the floor there were some orchids that were destroyed. Let Ryofu escape said to Taku who was listening to the report of the black haired girl with glasses. Okay, I guess sooner or later he'll come here to kill me of course said to Taku who cut the orchid with the scissors and then played with it with his left hand. She will try as long as I am to Taku and she is Ryofu he said to the black haired girl with a lens. You know I would give my life to avoid that said Kaku, so that the dark brown haired boy would stop playing with the scissors. Your life your life said to Taku, and then turned to see the black haired girl with glasses, who took a step back in fear upon seeing her leader's gloomy expression. How pretty he said and then threw a bouquet of orchids to his right hand which he caught with his hands. Ah what do I do with this? Asked Kaku. I want you to take him to Sausu in Kayasho, now, to Taku replied directly while turning his back on him again. Okay? Sausu. Kaku said fearfully. Yes as a token of my apologies said to Taku. Back to Hakufu's apartment. We see the orange haired girl who was sleeping peacefully on a sofa while the brown haired red haired girl took the blue haired girl to the door of the apartment after they both finished washing the dishes in the kitchen. Dinner was delicious Issei Ryamu said. No need Mu Chan, haha <laughs> said Issei with a clumsy smile, making the blue haired girl blush. You and Hakufu Chan also helped me cook, and I'm grateful for that, he said, so that the girl with the eye patch had a smile which opened the door to prepare to go home. Thanks, see you later, Issei said Ryamu, and then gave the brown haired red haired boy a kiss on the cheek, very close to the lips, leaving him in shock, something that the blue haired boy took advantage of to leave the orange haired boy's apartment and close the door as he left quickly, while blushing hard but smiling at the same time. The haha wow, mate, you're turning into a Casanova, Drag said with an amused tone. And now Drag although I don't refuse that said Issei with a blush of embarrassment and then calmed down. Also, did you notice anything about her? Drag asked. Well, to be honest, yes Issei replied. I noticed that Mu Chan had a slight itch on his patch after eating, why would that be? He said thoughtfully. You'll have to find out for yourself said Drag and then. Ring ring ring. The sound of a telephone rang on the table, so the brown red one went to answer the call. Good night Issei said. Good evening said a woman's voice on the line and then asked. Could you tell me who I'm talking to? I asked a brown haired red haired boy. Issei, Issei Haidu, a classmate of Hakufu Chan from Nanyo Academy, Issei responded. Oh, you're the boy my daughter talked so much about, said the woman making the brown haired red haired boy get an idea of that. Yes, you must be Mrs. Goey said Issei to be sure if she is the orange haired girl's mother. That's right, my name is Goey, Goey Sansaku, said the woman named Goey and then spoke angrily. 
Dust call me Goey or Goey San, Issei Kun, that lady thing makes me feel really old, Hakufu's mother said that the brown haired red haired boy felt a chill. Oh, sorry about that Issei said, and then spoke normally. Well, getting back to the topic Goey San, I would like you to answer a question I have in mind he said seriously over the phone. And that would be it. Goey said curiously. It's about Hakufu-chan said Issei, well on the other side of the line she changed totally serious. Congratulations and New Year. We see the green-haired girl and the short brown-haired girl walking in a dark forest. No one is following us anymore said Chinkyu after checking the path until the green-haired girl stopped. Hey Chinkyu Ryofu said. Forks. Said Chinkyu. Because you serve me so loyally Ryofu said well the short brown-haired girl was a little surprised by that, but still, she spoke to him. I've always been with you since we were little girls, said Chinku looking at the moon with a smile, while remembering those times when she was 10 years old, wearing a white two-button shirt with pink bows and green edges, a green skirt and red sneakers, next to her is the green-haired 11-year-old with loose hair that reaches below her back which she was sitting on a lawn. She was wearing a dark pink shirt with white and red edges, as well as a red ribbon tied around her neck, a skirt of the same color and black sneakers, both girls looked calmly and admiringly at the horizon of the sunset. Well I am still Kaudai Chinkyu and you are still Ryofu Hausen, that is a fate I could not ignore he said, and then blushed a little. But that's not really important anymore he said, looking at the green-haired girl. The destiny of each warrior is revealed in a different way, it may be the life he leads or the personality he has or his fighting ability, Ryofu said while looking at his left hand. I wonder how mine will turn out she said to herself. This Ryofu Chinkyu said to the green-haired girl who was looking up at the night sky. Ice Kun I hope to see you again thought Ryofu as his feelings for him increased more since the previous days when he missed that person who, unlike the blonde the love for the brown red is pure. Back to Hakufu's apartment. It was 9pm in the orange haired girl's apartment, the brown haired boy carried a sleepy orange haired girl in his arms while he took her to his room, when she was already inside, he gently put her on the bed while covering her with a sheet so that she wouldn't get cold, he looked around, there were two stuffed animals on a table, one of a panda and one of a rabbit. The closet to store clothes and a television, after that he focused his gaze on the orange-haired girl who was still sleeping, while he remembered the conversation he had with the girl's mother. Flashback. Are you sure you want to know the situation? Goey asked seriously. That's right Issei replied. You've seen when Hakufu suddenly gets angry while losing control and also gaining great power, right? Said Goey. Yes said Issei when he remembered that day where the orange-haired girl defeated Yashu's fighters brutally. Well, inside Hakufu an oriental dragon manifests which gives him great power, as he fights more, the dragon will awaken even more, and when it is fully awake Hakufu will die, said Goey, making the brown red boy open his eyes wide. What? Issei said in shock as that information affected him. You see, Hakufu's Magatama possesses the soul of a descendant of the supreme conqueror named Sun Si, a furious fighter known as the Shohei of Kodo, but he died at the hands of a very skilled warrior named Ganjai, said Goey telling more about Ganjai's origin. And the person who is destined by his Magatama to kill Hakufu, is Yukitsu he said, while well, the brown red man remained silent about that. Now do you understand why I didn't want Hakufu to advance in the great fighters tournament? If she were to fight Tataku, her dragon would surely emerge, said Goey in a worried tone since she didn't I don't want to see her daughter. Let me get this straight, you did Mrs. Kanzaki please by telling Tun-chan to beat Hakufu-chan, right? Issei asked. That's right, Goey replied. I explicitly asked her to disable her legs so that the dragon would not wake up in the middle of the battle, and now that Hakufu is safe, they will no longer continue fighting in the great fighters tournament for now she said, so she could speak sadly, and the brown-haired red boy heard her sobbing. I don't want to lose my daughter, she may be stupid and foolish, but she's my daughter and the only family I care about, she said between sobs. The brown-haired boy had now understood everything, the conversation with the black-haired woman during the fight between Nanyo and Kayasho, and that he was withdrawing from the tournament all of that is for the safety of the orange-haired girl. Though he san I will protect Hakufu-chan, and I won't let anything happen to her, I promise Issei said with great determination. The woman, for her part, was not convinced, after all her destiny was supposedly unavoidable, but there was something in her words that made her trust him. Okay, but you should know why Hakufu doesn't have a father, right? Goey asked. Yes, Issei answered. My husband, Bundai Sonkin, died as a victim of the same fate, and now, that same fate is stalking Hakufu said Goey, and then spoke in a serious tone. You agree to take care of her no matter what it might mean for your own death, he said to the brown-haired boy, to see if he was carrying that responsibility. Of course said Issei without hesitating for a moment. I'm glad Hakufu found someone like you, Goey said with a smile. Thank you Issei said. No, thank you, for taking care of my daughter Goey said calmly. 
end of flashback. After that, the brown-haired red-haired boy was going to leave the room, but a right hand held his left hand and made the boy stop. He turned around with a surprised expression to see the orange-haired girl who had her eyes closed. Who an apostrophe t go stay with me mnn said Hakufu who was still asleep and then pulled the brown red-haired boy's hand, making him lie down on the bed so that the orange-haired girl could hug his left arm from it and get even closer. I guess I won't be returning to my apartment today, Issei said to himself. That's right said Drake, while well, the brown-haired boy looked at the face of the orange-haired girl who continued sleeping peacefully. I wonder what Tataku is doing Issei said thoughtfully and with a serious tone. I don't know, partner, most likely he's going to make the next move said Drake. I understand Issei said and then looked at Hakufu who was still asleep. I promise I will always protect you Hakufu-chan he said in a whisper. After this, the brown-haired boy caresses the orange-haired girl's head of Ella making her smile, and after that, she began to close her eyes little by little due to sleep, until he fell asleep and entered his mind of Ella to continue training with the former Sekiruites. Ayasho Academy. Salon. What did you say? Said Aosu, bewildered. Are you saying it's over? Said Kakuka who was sitting on a wooden table with an ice pack on his crotch to lessen the pain from the brunette's blow, while the black-haired girl with glasses threw the bouquet of orchids to the floor. That's not what I said Rikuyo Academy will not be attending the tournament, and therefore, we decided the Kayasho Academy will win the game by default said Kaku. So that means that the Imperial Seal will be ours? Asked Kakuten who is sitting at a table. The winner of the tournament must have the Imperial Seal, but since his academy did not fight Kaku answered. That's not fair exclaimed Kakuten who was getting angry at that. You don't attend the tournament and you want to keep the first place he continued shouting angrily. Don't lose your cool said Sausu who was lying on a ledge near the window and then sat down while rubbing his eyes, causing the fighters of this academy and the black-haired girl with glasses to look at him. You mean it's okay if we invade his academy and kill him? I asked with a sarcastic smile. Yes Kaku responded with a smile, making the dark retied put on a serious expression. And in any way you want, if you can he said and then left the room to return to the Rikuyo Academy. Haku Bunwa was a provident intellectual warrior in the era of the Three Kingdoms, who did not boast of his abilities and was an excellent strategist who knew how to swim with the current. Preview of Chapter 9. Tokyo. Residence on Saku. Inside the residence, there was a voluptuous woman who has maintained her figure well over the years. She has violet eyes, short purple hair and bangs that reach her forehead, and is wearing a kimono. It was Goi Sansaku, Hakufu's mother and Bundai's widow, she had currently stopped crying when she finished her conversation with Issei half an hour ago, while looking at the photo of her husband on her nightstand, and also preparing to go visit the hospital where the orange-haired girl's cousin, Kaki, was hospitalized. That boy is the grandson of my father's friend Goi thought as he left the Sansaku residence. Hi do Issei, I will have the opportunity to meet you to see if you are worthy of being my daughter's husband, were the older woman's thoughts of her. At the same time outside Tokyo. Akutama Mountain. They found themselves in an inner room that was lit by a single lamp hanging over a table. There was a man the same age as Juzo, he had disheveled hair, violet eyes and was wearing a black gold yukata. His name was Kayaoji Sansaku. On his side was Juzo who was taking a sip of sake in his hand. Kayaoji was the first to break the silence. Juzo, why do you visit my temple? The man asked his friend rival of him. Man, I can't just eat and relax and see a friend, Juzo replied with a shrug. His friend let out a sigh and took his sake as well. How did you get to the tournament on Hagen Island? Said the owner of the temple hot spring. I faced a legendary beast the albino said simply. It never ceases to amaze me, Kayaoji said amused. Yes, there were sacred gear users and people with fighting skills, said Juzo, who takes the bottle to pour another drink. We're talking about the sacred gear. Do you think his grandson is a Welsh dragon wielder? Kayaoji asked seriously. It's a stupid question, although you can't deny that my grandson was destined, answered Juzo who took a sip of his drink. I see said Kayaoji before the response of his rival friend. However, I'm also worried about Isamu he said in a serious tone. Lest you also have said the owner of the temple hot springs. I don't know, but it has to do with the black market in some way, and I'm more than sure that my son did it to have power within the facts he said, with an extremely gloomy expression that almost broke his bottle of sake. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video.and have a fantastic day bye.